and i think that we are live what is up guys and welcome back to the channel if this is the first time we're meeting my name is oliver and on this channel we talk about education and early career development specifically in finland and uh, during these weekly live q a sessions i answer all of your burning questions about studying living and working in finland and uh, how these live streams work is that if you have a question that you would like me to answer live there is a google form linked into the description box below at all the way at the bottom of the description box so if you want me to answer your question live please post your question into the google form uh, why this is so is that uh, the live chat uh, actually gets pretty busy at times and uh, if you post your question into the chat it is highly likely that i'm going to miss your question however if you post your question into the google form again linked in the description box below i will have all the questions here on my computer in front of me and i will be able to answer your questions uh, in a first come serve first in a first come first serve basis live um, before we jump any further let me just quickly post the link to the live stream to our discord server so that every everyone can join us live there we go just let me uh, if there's any problems with the audio just let me let me know and uh, I'll, I'll adjust the audio levels uh, if necessary anyhow i think uh we will jump into the first question right away uh, we, I still have a couple of questions left from last week's live stream, and um, the first one comes from Jonne, who comes from the Netherlands and uh, has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in Aalto University and the degree program in mechanical engineering. And uh, the question is, how are winters like in Helsinki regarding hours of sunlight and the mood? That is a very good question and it's very, <laughs> very timely um, because we are currently uh, in mid-November, which is the crappiest time of year, especially in, in south of Finland. Um, Helsinki is uh, one of the southernmost cities in Finland. We are right here on the southern coast and um, currently it's gloomy. It's not too cold. We are still above freezing quite a bit actually, but it's dark. The days are pretty pretty short and uh, since we don't have any snow it's dark all the time uh, so at this time it's actually pretty crappy however uh, once we go further into the winter and uh, we get colder weather that is actually makes makes things a bit nicer because my kind of rule is that it's nicer to have a good uh it's nicer to have a cold weather so minus something degrees and dry rather than having just about freezing and wet because that means that it's always you're always cold because you know things are moist and your your clothes are going to be uh, wet all the time so that's that really sucks um, of course currently since we're all staying inside because of the covid situation uh, you don't really see that much of difference i guess Joe, what's up, dude? Welcome to the live stream. Finally had time to get back here at the channel. <laughs> how did you actually? How did you actually do? I, if I remember correctly, you had some of your exams uh, during the last few weeks. If I if I remember correctly, uh, let me know how did those actually go. Hopefully, they went well. Mm. And also, if if the sound is okay, please let me know. Um, I had some audio issues last week, so if there's any problems with the audio or the video, just let me know in the chat, and uh, we'll move on. Anyhow, uh, I'm still going through some of the questions that were left um, over from last week, and the next question is not uh, is inappropriate, so let's skip that. Uh, the next question comes from Architect Strange. Uh, and uh, the question is, what should be the university if I wish to do a PhD in design from the fine arts, from a fine arts background? Um, and with a design designer educator's experience of five, six years, what are the eligibility criteria and wh what kind of funding is available? Right, so there's a bunch of different questions there. So let's actually 
go through them piece by piece. So first of all, if you wish to do a PhD in design, I would definitely recommend actually applying to Aalto University, uh, purely because Aalto University School of Design, Arts and Design is basically num one of the hi mo hi highest ranked arts and design universities in the entire world. So you, you can't really go wrong there. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd say that that's the absolute number one. I actually don't really even know which other schools I could re recommend. Uh, the el eligibility criteria, I cannot say here uh, live because I don't, I actually never looked at them. However, you can actually find the eligibility criteria from the university website if you just go to through the uh, doctoral degrees uh, for Aalto University. Uh, about the funding, uh, specifically Aalto University has actually really good funding options. So I think that most of Aalto University doctoral students actually get automatic funding for their doctorates. I'm not completely sure, so don't uh, quote me on that, but this is what I remember. And um, in addition, uh, there are a lot of really good funding options, for example, from uh, in terms of grants that you can apply for from different uh, <clears throat> different private institutions like fund like funds um, and associations. So I think I think that uh, should work. What are I saying? That nice turtle turtleneck. <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty cold here at the office at the at the moment. So I, I thought that I would pull put on something a bit warmer uh, for just a moment at least. Uh, the lights that I have here are gonna heat up in in a moment, so then I should be warm. Uh, guys, actually, let me know where are you streaming from currently. It would be awesome to hear hear from what parts of the the world are people actually watching the stream right now. All right. The next question comes from Jenny. And uh, who again uh, is from Lithuania and uh, is apl applying to study in Finland in the next application period, and uh, is interested in Lappi University, Lapin Yliopisto, and uh, the degree of tourism management. And the question is: Is university ranking important in Finland? What ranking criteria are taken into account in Finnish universities? And uh, do employers pay huge attention to the university position in the ranking list lists? That's a good question. Um, personally, when I applied to Aalto University, the one of the reasons why I applied there in the first place, or at the time it was, um, oh, never mind. So uh, one of the reasons why I applied there was that I knew that Aalto, uh, the Aalto University School of Business was the best business school in, in Finland. Um, but I didn't really pay any ten attention to the rankings themselves. Um, of course, if if you're looking this from the perspective of uh, of an international student or prospective student, uh, one of the good one of the good ways of filtering out universities that you don't want to apply to are the the ones that are not that highly highly ranked. I guess for some people it matters a bit more. For some, not at all. Um, the ranking criteria. To Finnish universities, that's a very uh, difficult question because the rankings are not done by the universities themselves. They're actually there are multiple different organizations, like for example, um, or, let's see. Ah, uh, well, I don't remember any of them uh, from the top of my head. However, there there's a bunch of different organizations around the world that actually rank universities, and uh, they all have different criteria, and they actually rank universities on based on different things. So. Uh, it depends quite a lot. Uh, however, one of the things that is more most common when uh, talking about university rankings is actually the university research or the quality of the research. So our quality and quantity of the research. So how much research paper, highly highly um, uh, hi high quality research papers are the the uh, PhD students and then the researchers at the university able to push out to the public. Um, that is one of the ranking criteria, and that is also why um, universities try to get as much highly appreciated, uh, internationally recognized, talented staff, because those professors are usually the ones who actually push out or publish the best research. So that is that is one of the reasons. 
Um, it, however, if I if I would apply to university again, I would not really pay attention that much to the rankings, to be honest. Um, I would simply check what is the university that I would enjoy the most myself in terms of the city, the actual degree program, uh, the campus, etc. Um, again, Finnish universities are in general very high quality, or basically all of them, so... Um, I, I don't really know if if there's any point in in um, focusing too much on the on the ranking itself. Um, the Walid, oh hello, oh, <laughs> Walid, what's up? Welcome to the live stream. Awesome to have you here. I'm completely brain dead at the moment. Um, I don't know what's what's wrong with me. Um, hope you're having a great day. If you have any questions that you would like me to ask uh, answer live, as usual, post them into the Google form that is linked in the description box below, and um, I will be able to answer your questions live. Anyhow, the next one comes from Grisha, who is from Russia, Russia, and uh, is applying to study economics. And um, the question is. Were there some inordinary social situation at the university? In my experience, um, that's a that's an in, that's an abnormal question. So I don't really know how to how to s answer the question. Uh, Topoyo saying that the volume is a bit low. Um, hold on. Um, hopefully this is better. Um, I don't really want to go too high because then I'm going to start clipping the audio and it's not going to hear. Or it's gonna sound really, really bad. Uh, try to put uh, turn on your system volume a bit, bit. I think that that's the best way to do to hear my, me a bit better. Um, well, yeah. So, Krisha, I, I re really don't know how to answer the question. Where, if there are any kind of inordinary social situation, at, uh, so social situation at the university, that depends on you personally. What do you define as an as a good or weird social situation? I guess. All right, the next question comes from Mohamed El Farouk Zohar, who comes from Morocco and has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland. And, um, however, he is interested in applying for a master's degree in biology and uh, is currently doing his bachelor's in biology. And uh, the question is, how much... How much can the SAT exams reduce my tuition fees? And what is the best and cheapest university in Finland? And if the tuition fees cover education and also living costs? Um, okay, so there's there's a bunch of questions here. These are really good questions. And um, so let's break this down. So first of all, the SAD, your SAT exam scores do not by themselves reduce your tuition fee at, at all. Um, the only way for you to reduce or get a, for you to get a discount on your tuition fee is to get a scholarship. That's that's the only way to do this. So the only way to avoid paying for your tuition is to get a scholarship. Scholarships uh, are are um, you are able to apply for a scholarship if you are also um, eligible to pay tuition fee. So any anyone who has to pay tuition can also apply for a scholarship. I have multiple videos on the channel explaining the different type of scholarships that we have in Finland, how to apply for them, um, uh, what they cover and so on. So I won't go too, too deep into this. So please go into uh, into my videos and actually look for, just go to the channel, search for scholarships and you, could, you will find multiple videos there. Um, so you would need to get a scholarship. The one thing that I will say here is that do keep in mind that scholarships in Finland are rewarded by for um, on the base uh, on a competitive basis, meaning that only the best applicants get granted scholarships. Which means, then on the other hand, that your SAT test scores will definitely impact your chances on getting a scholarship. So your SAT tests will not reduce the tuition. However, if you want to get a scholarship you will have to do really well in your SAT SATs. How well and what kind of scores do you actually, points you do, do you actually need to get from your SATs, DRAs or whatever, 
I don't know. There is no public information on this uh, because that is something that the universities in Finland don't have to publicize. Uh, you have to do really well. That's that's the kind of the rule of thumb. However, do keep in mind that your SATs, ELs, or IELTS, TOEFLs, uh, your other language tests or whatever standardized test that, that you have to do for the application process, that is not the only thing that will count when the university is thinking about who to grant the scholarships. In addition, your if you have to submit your motivation letter or CV or if you need prior educational background, all of this is going to impact your chances on getting a scholarship. So so the SATs are not the only thing that is going to impact this. Uh, then the question, what is the cheapest and best university in Finland? Impossible to say. Uh, I have a video on the channel titled... Uh, university tuition fees for international students in Finland. In the description box of that video, I have a link to a Google spreadsheet where I have all the universities in Finland listed out. And in addition, I have all of their tuition fees listed out in the spread same spreadsheet. So you can go ahead and check out what is the kind of the cheapest university from there. However, of course, here comes the... Uh, this is a two-edged sword because... I always say that all Finnish universities are very high quality, but of, of course, the lower the tuition fee, there is always something, you know, I don't want to say bad, but there is you, you always have to pay for, with something for a lower tuition fee. So Aalto University, one of the best universities in Finland, has one of the highest tuition fees in Finland. They also have one of the best campuses, one of the best locations in, in Finland. So if you have a lower tuition fee, maybe the campus is not as cool, maybe the city is not as awesome, maybe the student culture isn't really that good, or maybe the level of education is not really as high as with Aalto or Helsinki University. So low tuition fees, high level of education, those usually don't walk hand in hand, like as a rule of thumb, if that makes any sense. Um, Tuition fees, do they uh, cover education and also living costs? No. No. In addition to your tuition fees, you have to be able to cover your own living costs. And uh, when you are admitted to study in Finland, you will have to uh, apply for a residence permit if you are a non-European Union citizen. And uh, you apply for a residence permit from the Finnish Immigration Service. And when you apply for a residence permit for your studies, the Finnish Immigration Service is going to require you to have at least 560 euros per month on uh, for your living costs on your bank account for the entire duration of your residence permit. Meaning that if you apply for a one-year residence permit uh, initially, you have to have 6,720 euros on your bank account at the time that you apply for the residence permit. And no, you cannot pay for your living cost with part-time work. That's not possible. So, um, right. I think that's it. Um, hello, everyone uh, who has just joined the stream. Uh, Topoyo, awesome to have you here. Orange machine machines, awesome to have you here here as well. Walid, once again, I uh, already ha said hey to hey to you, but uh, what's up? Uh, I'm I'm start starting to wake up. Um, Arjun, awesome to have you here as well. Uh, and uh, Noob, what's up? Awesome to have you here. Great avatar, by the way. <laughs> um, Arjun saying, Oli Hi Oliver, I started writing mo my motivation letter two weeks ago and uh, now currently I'm in the sixth revision and I'm not able to get uh, to conclude. Every time I read the letter I get new ideas, so how do I end it? By ending it. Um, you're never going to have it uh, have it done perfectly. Um, done is better than perfect. Of course, you has, you still have plenty of time to work on your motivation letter. And I would, instead of reading it through yourself, I would definitely have uh, some other people read through it. And I don't mean your parents. Please don't make your parents read your motivation letter because usually your parents are the last people who will give you honest feedback. Ask for your friends to read them through, uh, maybe uh, an ex-colleague or your boss or, or for example, your old professor or your teacher if you're if you're still in high school. Um, ask for people who will give you honest 
constructive feedback and re rather having someone who doesn't really know what they're doing have someone who uh, whose profession uh means that they have uh, been writing a lot so for example if, if you're still in high school have your um your uh, uh, um a teacher who for example um has to write and read a lot uh, to actually read it through so they can check the uh, structure and then if if you have already done your bachelor's degree and you're applying for a master's then ask your old professor to read your motivation letter because they will know uh, how to help you uh, with the kind of the academic side of things how to apply for academics in a sense so uh, don't have your parents read it through but don't get stuck on your motivation letter uh, yourself ask for feedback from some other people and remember that it's never going to be perfect at some point you have to move on um in addition, I, I really recommend that you go through, there are multiple different YouTube channels that focus mostly on like product, uh, productivity, applying to universities, and um, um, they have a lot of uh, content on motivation letters, CVs and stuff. I don't want to give any advice myself on the actual content because I don't have any experience there, uh, but I, I think that these will, will give you a lot of really good tools. Arjuna, what's up? Awesome to have you here as well. Um, as always, guys, if you have any questions, please post your questions into the Google form that I have linked in the description box below and um, I will uh, answer your questions live. There's still a couple of questions last last um, there is still a couple of questions that um, were left behind from last week because I have to end I had to end the stream because my brain was starting to die so I will jump back into the questions. Masarura, awesome to have you here as well. What is up? Welcome to the live stream. Um, all right. <clears throat> the next question comes from Jonne, who comes from the Netherlands. And uh, as I mentioned before, is applying in the next, next application period to Aalto University School of Engineering, specifically to the program of mechanical engineering. And the question's, question is, how long are waiting lists for student housing? And if you know, how long are the queues for family housing? Should I apply already before I, I know whether or, or not I'm admitted? Good questions. Um, first of all, uh, the waiting lists for student housing can be anywhere from a few weeks or a week to two years, depending on, on what kind of an apartment you apply for and from where. Um, in your case, the two relevant housing providers are Alto University University, uh, Student Union, AYY, which has a lot of apart student apartments, for example, in the campus area, which is really cool. Um, but the second is HOAS, which uh, actually happens to be one of the partners or sponsors on this channel. So HOAS is actually a non-profit, hashtag not sponsored. HOAS is a non-profit organization actually, which is actually owned, founded and owned by student organiza organizations in Finland. And uh, they uh, built, rent and manage a huge amount of student apartments in the Helsinki capital region. I've actually lived in their apartments for for the entirety of my studies, and I've been super happy. They're not only cheap, but the, they also have a lot of really, uh, really nice new buildings really close to the center of Helsinki. So I would definitely apply for theirs as well. If you're applying for a student apartment, I have multiple, multiple videos about this topic on the channel. I actually have a playlist about this uh, in the channel, so go ahead and check that out. Uh, about the waiting lists, uh, the th rule of thumb is that you should apply to the student apartments as soon as you are allowed to. So to kind of answer your second question, which was, should I apply already before I know whether I whether or not I'm admitted? No, you cannot. You, you actually can't apply because you ha have to have your admission letter before you can actually apply. So how there's there's a couple of differences here um, about the application timelines. So if you apply for an uh, apartment from AYY, so from the Alto Student Union, they actually allow you to apply for the apartment as soon as you get as soon as you get the uh, letter of admission. Uh, also, their queues are very much longer than, for example, with HOAS. Um, however, with HOAS is they allow you to apply to apartments. I think four months early, early at the earliest, four months before you actually need to move in. So there's a bit of a restriction there. However, HOAS usually has 
shorter queues. They actually don't have queues. Uh, they don't ha have like this queue number system. Rather, they actually uh, share, give out the apartments based on priority. So, for example, uh, if you if you don't come from a wealthy background, then you're more likely to get an apartment fast compared to someone who has two Ferraris and, and owns a boat, basically. Um, uh, one more rule rule of thumb is that studios are the most sought after apartments. So if you apply for a studio, it can actually take even up to a couple of years before you get a studio, student apartment studio for yourself. The cool thing is that you're looking for family housing. So for example, me and my girlfriend, we are living in this family apartment from Haas and they actually don't have that much uh, demand, uh, which means that the queues are quite a lot uh, shorter. So it can actually be faster for you to get a kind of family apartment compared to any other type. So, all right. Uh, Arjun saying, is there any restrictions on the number of chapters which should be in the motivation letter? That's a really good question. Um, just out of out of the top of my head, um, if I were to start writing a motivation letter, and please, again, just take everything that I say with a grain of salt, because I have not written, I have not uh, written a motivation letter, not for school and not for work in years. Um, but I would keep it to a maximum of like four chapters or four par paragraphs, basically, if, if it's a one pager, basically. Um, three is something that I usually have used for my motivation letters when I apply for work. Uh, I usually divide like a job motivation letter into three sections, which, which are um, what kind of value do I bring to your company? Uh, what in my background merits that value that I bring into your company? And then like, what is my vision for the future or something like this? Um, however, it's a bit different for you, of course. So again, take this with a grain, with a grain of salt. Uh, pl please, if you already have like five chapters, don't change your motivation letter to three just because I said so. <laughs> I'm not saying so. Um, that's just what I would maybe do if I had to start from scratch. Topoya saying uh, to Kasula, there is a limit uh, to ask how many characters you have can have on your motivation letter, and that depends on the program you are applying to. Yeah, that's that's actually true, and uh, from there you can kind of uh, build your your um, chapters or the structure of your motivation letter. Um, again, I would not get stuck on the number of chapters. I would make sure that the entire motivation letter and the kind of the story that you're telling is fluid, uh, that it has a, uh, it has a, um, uh, it's nice to read. I just want to have something that is very nice to read. I want you to tell a story, of course, right? Um, again, your motivation letter is something that is going to set you apart from the pack. So, so you want to have, uh, you, you, you don't just want to list out keywords that you think that they want that you think that the um, admission panel wants to hear from you. Rather, they want you to tell your story. Of course, you have your instructions, but try to make it into a, something that is very nice to read because that that's, that is going to make your motivation, stick, motivation letter stick into their minds. Aaron, what's up? Awesome to have you here as well. Um, Master Master asking, do they judge me by my grades from school or just my SAT scores at all? Um, that depends on the program that you're applying to. If they do not list out your school grades or your GPA in the application requirements, then I don't think you should even have to submit your school diploma, I think. Don't quote me on this, but basically if they, they, they should be able, they should give you the exact application requirements on the application website for that specific program that you're looking to applying apply to so so follow those instructions i will get my high school final results in and about in at around june or july or even later in 2021 so do i need to apply with the predicted results or if i apply at january at all right so this is uh go please so master please go to the uh, alto university application website that uh, for that program that you're actually looking to apply to and they have a official schedule there they have official deadlines 
already on the website. Um, and you are able to apply to a degree even though you don't have your high school diploma. However, you still have to submit it at 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 latest at a certain date. I don't remember the exact date, but they already have the schedule on the website. So you will see at what is the latest point in time that you have to submit your translated and certified high school diploma. So remember that you have to have it translated unless it's, unless it's already in English. So take that into account as well. Mm, Ame saying, how is the Finnish program? Is it official or fishy? Um, that's a that's an interesting question. I actually don't get what you're meaning. So please uh, elaborate a bit more on the on the question. Anyhow, uh, guys, again, as usual, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer live about studying, living, or working in Finland, I have a Google form linked into the description box below. So go ahead and post your question into the Google form. Go all the way down the description box, and uh, you will get a link there. Um, that will help me. That will give me your questions in front of me on the computer, and that will allow me to answer your questions in a first-come, first-served basis. Anyways, uh, next question comes from Jenny, uh, again from Lithuania, and the question is, how much, how many working hours per week can a student from the European Union work during one's bachelor's and master's studies? Uh, if you are a European Union citizen, or a citizen of a European economic area country, there is no restrictions on how many hours you can actually work while you're studying in Finland. If you are a uh, if you are not a citizen of a European Union or a European Economic Area uh, country, then you you're restricted to work 25 hours per week on average during the times when uh, lectures are given. So basically during your the term the, or semester. Um, this means that uh, the 25 hours is not calculated on a week to week basis, but it's rather c uh, calculated as an average over each semester. So. That means that during the autumn semester, you are allowed to work for 25 hours on average. And then the cal calculation is done uh, around New Year's. Uh, however, there is a couple of exceptions here. During holidays, which are the Christmas holiday and summer holiday, you can work without any limitations, even if you're not a European Union citizen. Um, the Christmas holidays in Finland is or are, I think, three weeks long? Four? Four, four weeks and then the summer holidays they're almost three months so you can work for quite a while during the summer ah oh, Arjun saying that uh, uh, you keep on asking to fill the Google form but I'm watching the YouTube live on mobile it's very difficult to switch from YouTube to Google form sure I understand that okay that's, that's fine then uh, no problem um, I, I totally get it that's don't worry about it. Uh, anyways, uh, but, but just no, note that I will I will jump back and forth from the form into the chat uh, every one, once in a while. So it, it it is just going to take a while for me to answer any. any ah, it is going to take a while for me to answer any of your questions. But um, that's something that we just have to live with. Anyhow, uh, the next question comes from Rahul Amin Polash, who comes from Bangladesh, and uh, is applying in the next application period, and. Uh, just completed my bachelor's and I would like to apply for another bachelor's degree in Finland. Interesting, okay. Um, and uh, is interested in doing a bachelor's in English. I'm not sure if that's some a bachelor's degree taught in English or a bachelor's in English literature. Mm. And the question is, can I apply for another bachelor's degree in Finland because I have already finished my bachelor's in Bangladesh? Um, yes, yes you can. Um, However, you cannot apply for a bachelor's based on your batch previous bachelor's degree, meaning that you would still be graded based on your high school diploma and the potential like SAT scores or so. Uh, however, my question is, why do you want to do a second bachelor's degree? Why don't you just apply for a master's? Um, especially... Or of course, this is d this depends on what do you want to study. Uh, if you want to do a degree that is done in a university of applied sciences, say for example nursing, that in that case, sure, you could do a second bachelor's because nursing is a bachelor's level degree. However, if you want to study a university level degree, meaning like for example literature or economics or 
hard sciences, whatever, then there's no point of doing a second bachelor's. Just go for a master's degree. Um, again, this depends on your background. What is your previous degree and what do you want to do? Um, anyhow, the next question comes from Sammy. And the question is, Terve Oliver, terve terve, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I have a question. My girlfriend is from Finland. I graduated this year uh, a master's degree in electrical engineering in France, but I'm not a European Union citizen. I'm considering moving to Finland. Uh, is it difficult to find a job there with my French degree? Right. So I actually remember Sami asked me this about this. Was it in Discord or maybe in one of the um, YouTube um, videos uh, or comment sections? Um, it doesn't matter that you're not a e European Union citizen in terms of like finding work. As long as you can actually move to Finland um, or get a residence permit in Finland, then you should have no problems. You have a master's degree in electrical engineering. So as long as you know like at all what you're doing, uh, as long as you're proficient at what you're doing, that's a bit nicer way of saying it, you should ha not have that much problem in, in finding job. At least not, not more problems than any local Finnish job applicant at least um, if you have a degree from France that's a European degree though so that should not be a problem uh, of course job job hunting in Finland is not easy and you know you have to know what you're doing um, however again it, I, I don't think you're not going to have any more problems than anyone else at least you're not going to be like a like a negative exception to the rule that's it let's put it this way um, the next one comes from Walid from France and um, is currently studying at the Grenoble Alps University. Hmm, okay, that's interesting. And uh, he's studying electric power engineering. Cool. All right. And uh, Walid has not yet decided whether or not he wants to come to study in Finland. Ah, sorry. That was the previous question. Never mind. Um, the next one comes from Grisha from Russia. Uh, and the question is, are there non or okay, I actually got this as well. What the frick? I got this as well. All right, okay, now we got a new one. Weird. Um, the next question comes from Zach, uh, who comes from France as well. Interesting. Bonjour. Um, he is applying in the to study in Finland in the next uh, next application period and is applying to all the university bachelors in degree in economics. Awesome. Um, the question is: Can you get housing allowance from Kela as a European Union student? No, I don't think so. You have to be a Finnish citizen in order to to get that. Uh, what about financial aid? No to that as well. I think uh, so. For those of you who who don't know what I, what we're talking about here is uh, housing allowance or financial aid from Kela, which is the Finnish social se social security um, administrator. Uh, basically, that means government financial aid. I think that's just for Finnish nationals. There are some exceptions, but unless you are in like very deep financial. Uh, problems and not because of yourself but your background entitles you then you might be able to get this kind of allowance or financial aid but however uh, uh no so yeah actually you're, he's saying there i heard finnish students get 500 uh 500 euros per month from kela but on their website i see only only 250 euros uh, and I wonder if it applies to other Europeans as well. No, it does not. It only applies to Finnish nationals. Uh, basically, we pay in, we pay for the government uh, study allowance based on our taxes. So thus, it's only for Finnish nationals who actually pay taxes here. Um, another question from Zach, um, and um, the question is: Is it easier to get? AYY or or HOAS housing at Aldi, as an Aalto University student. I wonder how realistic it is to have a place in Kalli or at the campus in Otanemi. So again, if we go, ba go back to my previous uh, answer, uh, what Zach is referring here is to the uh, student apartments that you can actually apply for as, a, uh, as an Aalto University student. So the first one was from AYY, which means the Aalto University, Aalto University Student Union, which is the student union for Aalto University students. 
And uh, they have, AYY has a bunch of student apartments, uh, not only around the city, but also inside of the Aalto, Aalto University campus. And uh, they are extremely sought after and uh, they're really popular. So it, they actually have pretty long quick queues. So I have no idea how potential it is or, or, or realistic it is to get an apartment. It, it's going to take time. So you have to apply really early. So basically the second that you know that you're admitted to study at Aalto, you should apply to for the um, housing or apartments. Uh, about HOAS, uh, it's much easier or faster to get a get an apartment unless again you're from a very wealthy background because they um, give out the the apartments based on priority so and and need uh, to the question uh, about how realistic is it to get a place at a very certain area uh, he mentioned Kallio which is a a um, city district district in, in Helsinki a really cool place or at the campus in Otaniemi uh, I, I would not my general kind of rule of thumb and guide that, that I give to people is that don't don't restrict the options on student housing on certain areas because that is going to make it less likely that you actually are given a student apartment. Um, the, the pickier you are, the longer you have to wait. So basically up for, apply for everything that you can actually apply for and then accept whatever is given to you. Um, yeah. Um, Jumping back into the chat for just a second. Uh, Amy, awesome to have you here as well. What's up? Anton, what's up for you as well? Uh, and Jokan Studio is awesome to have you here as well. And Mantis, hello to you as well. Awesome to have all the regulars on the stream. Um, let's see. Arjun saying, in the motivation letter, is it a good idea to mention about my past work experience or should I just write about my current role uh, or my current work or and the role in it. I got five years of work experience. That's a good question. I think that you should focus on the things that actually matter. So if you have like five years of experience working at McDonald's, well, actually you could spin that in a positive manner so that that would actually be relevant. But think of this, uh, think about this as you, you should only put things into the motivation letter and CV that actually matter. Don't fill up the motivation letter or CV with things and keywords uh, only include things that actually have impact on on the thing that you're applying for. So since you're applying for a master's, if your previous work experience ha doesn't have anything to do with it, I wouldn't go into details. I would mention that I have X amount of years of work experience in my field, which is good. However, I would not go like listing out what kind of jobs I've been doing because that's not relevant. Uh, and plus it, it takes space that you would or that you could actually use in something with something else right mm. Aaron saying minutes ago I found out the the cat vibing meme was finished and I it blew my mind <laughs> lol have you ever seen it Oliver I actually don't I'm not quite sure that you, what you're actually meaning so Aaron if you if you have the the link to the meme just uh, share it in the chat and I, I can actually show it live because uh, I'm not completely sure what you're actually talking about. Uh, Anton saying uh, or asking how about biomedical sciences and the scope of them in Finland? Uh, really good question. I have no idea. I have no prior exp uh, personal experience in biomedical sciences. Um, and again, the question about scope, um, there are definitely master's degrees and PhD opportunities in biomedical sciences. So you could do a bachelor's and a master's and continue for a PhD if you want to. Uh, so I'm not sure if that answers or answers your question. Um, Amy saying FinIPS, Finnish Network for International Programs. Ah, for English taught bachelor's and master's. They take an entrance in other countries outside Finland. Uh, this year it's online. Let's see. I have to actually go back a bit to get the context. Um, right. So, Amy, I have no idea. I've never heard of Finips, Finips actually before. Um, I, I, I don't know. I actually have to check it right here. What is it? Um, let's see. So let's actually share this for everyone else as well. Yes, yes, yes. Studying English in Finland's Finnish. Psh. Uh, is there a way to study in English in Finnish universities of applying some of the department internationally recognized and professional blah 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 function Finnish net is to arrange network 
entrance examinations for the UAS is English taught degree programs in countries outside of Finland. In 2021, you can take the exams fully online. In addition, Finnish promotes the very various study options for the networks. Blah, blah, blah. Um, that's a good question. I have no idea. I've never heard, the, oh, heard of this before. I don't understand what the value is here because, for example, if you think about like the entrance examinations that some universities of applied sciences have, many of them do have exams um, when you apply for them, they are done online by the universities themselves. So I'm not I, I'm not familiar with the service prior, so I can't comment. But I don't like having looked looked at it for 10 seconds i don't really understand what the what the value is especially if you have to pay for the service so um i would i would simply apply on my own uh you can the entire application process is done online because of covid of course so i don't really really understand why there is a reason to use a service that is like a, a middleman for you to do things online when everything is done on online already if, if you get what i mean arthur what's up awesome to have you here as well hope uh hope it's awesome to have all the all the regulars on the stream as always um Masrur, you're welcome uh hope that you actually got some value out of this uh, i will jump back into the form so guys uh, again to just to reiter reiterate myself repeat myself um if you want me to answer some of your questions live and you're not watching on mobile which I know that it's a bit more difficult. There is a Google form linked into the description box below. So if you want me to answer your questions live, please ask your question through the Google form because that makes it easier for me to find the questions, especially when the chat gets a bit busy. Anyways, uh, the next question comes from Denise, who comes from Turkey. and has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, however, is interested in history, philosophy, and teaching. And the question is, Hello, I'm thinking of coming to Finland for university after two years. How much money would you suggest that we come with us uh, just in case for guarantee? Wouldn't we even need to bring money with us if, even if we could find a job directly? By the way, I'm a Swiss citizen, so I do not need to pay tuition fees. So, um... That's an interesting question. So even if you, if you're a European Union citizen and you don't have to pay tuition fee fees, I would still not expect for you to find a job in Finland when you come here or uh, right away after you come here. That's just simply not realistic in my opinion. So I would have enough savings for half a year maybe to to like survive and I, a good benchmark is that since you still have to pay for your living costs I would say that in Helsinki, uh, if, if you live in the capital region, you need like 600, 700 euros to live comf comfortably in, in per month. So the the guideline from the Finnish immigration service, as I've mentioned a thousand times during these live streams, is 560 euros per month just for living costs. So rent, utilities, food, travel, etc. However, I, I actually have a video on the channel where I explain I actually do the math. I actually do the math on how much money you spend normally as a student in Finland, and in my honest opinion, 560 euros is not that much, especially if you don't live in like a very cheap student apartment. Um, you can do buy with 560 euros per month. However, considering that there's quite a lot to do in Finland, there's a lot of really cool places where you can travel. You can go to Lapland, especially if you come here to in winter. Uh, there's a lot of student parties and activities and different things that you can do. All of them cost something, right? They're not that expensive, but all of, you know, it's like 10 euros there, 10, 5 euros there. So that accumulates quite fast. And with 560 euros, you will miss quite a lot of stuff because that's not enough money to pay for like your living cost and then having a lot of fun on the at the same time. And that sucks because if you come here and, and you basically just have to sit in the library 24 seven and, and you, you don't, you cannot afford doing anything. I don't know that, that kind of sucks. Of course you can do it if you just want to do the degree, that's, that's fine. And when you get a job, then, then you, you actually can afford doing a bit more. But um, what I, for example, uh, experienced in Germany in Munich was that if if I had been in Germany for a, for a summer, just sitting in the library, 
or school, that would have been a really bad summer. Instead, I had enough savings to actually like do stuff during the during the stream uh, during the summer. So it was really really nice. <laughs> Alexi himself, what is up, dude? Thank you so much for the two euro super chat. <laughs> contribution contribution to Oliver's espresso fund. Thank you. I I, I need to get like this um, sastapossu. Say what is it called? Uh, this saving thing where I have all my coins for my espresso fund and I have to put a two euro coin there from from Alexi. Gling, gling. Thank you so much. Uh, awesome to have you here. Uh, <laughs> if uh, if for some weird reason none of you or some of you are not familiar with Alexi's work, uh, his channel, go ahead and check out his channel. Uh, Alexi himself videos about Finland. He does a lot of really awesome content on Finnish, Finland, Finnish culture and, and you know everything around these these topics and um, for example uh, for those of you who are interested in dating Finnish girls or, or guys he has a lot of really cool videos about those topics so go ahead and check out his videos uh, again appreciated uh, the pig, piggy bank that's yeah exactly like uh, this actual pig I have this uh, old like 15 year old old piggy bank that I actually got from one of the banks that I'm a customer of I've had it for like 15, 15, 20 years or so, and I still have money there. So I have to start adding my espresso funds there. That's thanks uh, again. Appreciate it. Um, all right. Uh, the next question <coughs> comes from Guli, who comes from Utskabisk, Uts, Utsbegistan. I'm always having trouble with the, with the Z. Uzbekistan, uh, and uh, he's applying in the. Uh, she, I'm sorry, she's applying in the next application period to Hanken School of Economics to study business. Awesome. And uh, the question is, what is the most, the easiest university to get admi admitted and fast with less requirements? Interesting question. Um, Hanken School of Economics is definitely not the easiest school to get admitted to because Hanken is 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 a very highly regarded business school. Um, Alexi, I'm not sure if you have any if you don't if you remember, like which schools are, I, I guess business schools are more more easier to get into necessarily not business but it basically if if it's easier to get into the school of business it's probably easier to get into the school of engineering as well in the same university so do you like remember is it like easier to get into Oulu or Vasa or Yuvaskula or if, if you have a take on this just share it in the chat um, I, I would say that like the university of Oulu um, the their business school is is one of the easier ones to get in how it's not it's a really good school still um, but most people, in Finnish people, like uh, want to come to the capital region to study. Um, the fastest admission—that's th kind of a problematic question because the the admission processes in Finland are just long. Uh, you cannot really do anything about it. I actually have a video coming up about this because there is actually, uh, most of you guys know that there's like two different ways of applying to study in Finland. There's this, you have these joint applications and then you have these separate applications. And uh, I don't want to go into detail about them because it's pretty damn confusing. I have a video about a video coming about this very topic next week. So check that out. However, there is actually a third way of applying to study in Finland that can actually... Um, you can go past the joint and separate application. I cannot explain it here because it's too complicated. However, I actually have a video coming about it in hopefully three weeks. It's actually a Finnish um, company that is like exporting Finnish um, education abroad. And they have this really cool new concept where, where you can actually have much faster uh, admission processes. So I think they are like a, a average average time for them to let you know whether or not you're ac accepted to a university takes like four weeks which is super fast because normally that that takes multiple months um, again i will talk about this more n in a couple of weeks if you want to if you want to check this out the service out before i don't know i guess i could i guess i could just show it to you uh it's a it's a service called or a business called edunation and uh, these guys actually have this kind of uh, like um how, do, how should I explain this? 
they, they basically have the two different services, like this pathway service, which I don't want to go into details at this point. Uh, this is like a workaround for people who don't are not necessarily ready yet ready to apply uh, to study in Finland through the normal system. Uh, then they have this second system, which is their normal like application. So what Edunation does is that they collaborate with a bunch of Finnish universities and universities of uh, applied sciences, and um, you can apply to study to those school specific schools through Edunation, and this makes the admission process super fast. Uh, because they are able to give you like initial answers on whether or not you're going to be admitted in like 24, 48 hours. And then you will get a definite answer on on whether or not you're accepted in in like four or five weeks, which is super quickly. Uh, so check this out. It's really cool. Um, I will have a dedicated video about this service in a couple of weeks. I, I still I'm still working on, on the research part. So it's going to take a while. But um, if you're interested in like taking a fast track to to study in Finland, this is the service that you should check out. Ariuna, hey, what's up? Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, that's five uh, pen. The that is five currencies. Thank you very much. It's very much appreciated. That would that, that will also go into my espresso fund in my piggy bank piggy bank as well. I actually need to get like a real piggy bank here. Um, and the question is, which would you say is more expensive for students, Munich or Helsinki? That's a good question. I would actually say that Munich is a bit more expensive for students because the, the living costs there are so much higher than in Finland. So in general, what I experienced is that I spent like almost double the money for living, uh, I'm sorry, for the apartment uh, in Munich compared to, to Helsinki. However, uh, food and of course like alcohol, beer, is much cheaper in in Munich compared to Helsinki, uh, because most of that is like local. So you save quite a lot of money on on alcohol, <laughs> alcohol and and food. However, then the the uh, living uh, darn living costs, the apartments and the utilities, uh, the uh, insurances and this kind of stuff that that actually brought the costs a bit higher. So I think like I spent. I spent like eighty um, percent more per month on in in Munich. That might also have something to do with the fact that I I went to quite a lot of parties and I I went out and ate outside quite a lot. But however, I still noticed that it was quite a bit more expensive to live there. Uh, Alex is saying that yeah, not really sure about business schools and and how competitive, uh, how uh, easy it's it is to get in. Um, saying that I think that they're all quite competitive. They are Finnish business schools are very competitive uh, in general, and the the differences aren't aren't that big. And take into account that I applied to business school in 2012, so that's eight years ago, so or almost nine years ago, so. It, it might have changed a bit, but I think that it was uh, like Yuvaskula and then all were like the easiest to, to get in. I think Helsing, all the schools in Helsinki, Turku and Vasa were the more difficult ones because they're, they are very popular cities, all of them. Uh, B, B Rain uh, asking, can I apply to study in Finland with a three years bachelor's degree? Yes, you can, depending on the uh, field and the master's that you're actually, that you want to do. Yes, you can, uh, but you have to check out the specific application requirements for each uh, master's degree from the university website. So you you first need to know what field you're, you want to study, then you have to find the, all the relevant universities, and then you have to find the all the all the relevant master's level degrees, and then from each of those degree programs you have to check out which are the specific individual application requirements. So. Uh, Polkit such such shuts shuts Deva. Sorry for butchering your name. Asking how difficult is it to land a job as a fresher software engineer? Uh, it's gonna be difficult. If you're like super proficient at what you're doing and you you're doing like uh, development already as a hobby and you're very good at what you do, uh, then it's easier. But as a fresher, it's it's gonna be difficult. I would say that don't. I should. I, I would not uh, rely on getting a job as I, during your first year. However, of course, in in software development and s uh, software engineers in general, they have very good career prospects in Finland because we have such a huge demand. So, 
in general, it is easier, much easier for developers to get a job in Finland as a student compared to any other field. However, in the first year, it's always difficult. Uh, and Jochen Studios asking, are there job openings for your digital inter international business student graduates? I'm sure there are. It's impossible for me to kind of um, uh, list them out here because I, I that depends fully on what courses you have done, uh, what is your prior background is, and um, how good is are you in what you're doing. Um, but yeah, definitely, why not? Business is always uh, a good field because there's always plenty of opportunities there. Chatnia Ori asking, if, are there any Indians in the chat? I'm pretty sure that there are. Uh, just wait for a moment and I'm sure that people will, will actually come out. Anyways, the next question in the forum comes from Architect Strange, uh, who comes from India and uh, is a regular on the channel and uh, is applying to other University School of Arts and Design. And uh, the question is, tell me something about tourism in and around Finland. That's actually a very interesting question. Alexi, would you like to take this question? Uh, would you like to tell people something about tourism in and around Finland? What are like the best things that you can actually do in Finland as a as a tourist or uh, as a new person in in the country? Um, while you hopefully are are writing some kind of a short answer, I would say that definitely you should check out Lapland, uh, Turku. The city of Turku is beautiful. It's really really nice. There they have a Turku is. is um, a really old city and I, I, it has this kind of old town, old city vibe and I really like it. I've been there multiple times, never lived there, but uh, I really like being there or uh, visiting. Um, I would definitely check out Hanko. Hanko is the southernmost uh, city in Finland. It's in the west or southwest west corner or coast of Finland. Uh, it's basically, basically like the Riviera of Finland. Uh, because if if you think about it, like Finland is the first thing that does not come into mind in about Finland is like beaches, long sandy beaches. However, Hanko has these beautiful natural sandy beaches that go for kilometers, like literally their 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 longest beach is like four kilometers long, um, and their the water is li really shallow, so it's really nice for swimming. Uh, the the water is crystal clear because it's next to the open water and the water circulates a lot. However, because the water is so the the uh, beaches are so shallow, the water actually warms up, heats up during the summer really nicely. So actually, people like to go there and like you know bathe and swim uh, during the summer. So I really recommend it. It's it's only like two hours um, away from Helsinki with a car. So I r definitely recommend it. Yeah, Alex is saying that uh, I would advise to visit the places outside of Helsinki. That's where the real Finland is. I agree. Um, there's a lot of really awesome like countryside um, that you can see. Of course, you know, Lap the ski centers in Lapland, they're, they're really touristy. They're not like super Finnish. Uh, we have a lot of tourists come in there. However, depending on where you go to Lapland, uh, you get more authentic finished uh, things as well one more thing that i would really recommend is that uh, if you're moving with a car um, and you really want to drive a long distance go and cross the border of finland and norway at the top uh, of finland and you actually can visit norway and you can go to lofoten which is this you you probably seen the pictures um let's see if i can actually pull something out Mm. Yeah, so Lofoten is basically, you've probably seen these places already uh, somewhere around the web, but these immense cliffs, cliffs that you have in, in Norway, and they have beautiful, beautiful uh, roads that you can drive through, and, and it's just, it's pretty damn amazing. I've never been there myself. It's such a long, long drive um, from Helsinki. Uh, but if you, for example, fly to northern Lapland and then you rent a car and go to Norway, that would be something really cool for you to experience. Um, anyhow, the next question comes from Karna from Peru, who is applying in the next application period and uh, is interested in doing English studies at the University of Helsinki. And uh, the question is, or the comment is, I find 
find it kind of annoying to send an enclosure full of certified copy copies to another country because due to the COVID-19 situation, they are, n- they are not easy to uh, transmit and it's super expensive to send them. Agreed. Um, I'm not completely, aw- I'm not totally aware of why the reasons why universities want you to send like actual physical certified copies of your documents to the university. I think that's like an authentic authenticity reason. But yeah, I, I totally get it. It's super annoying and it's really expensive. That's given. And uh, but unfortunately, that's just something that you need to do. Um, the University of Helsinki gives you the option to send digital enclosures through a third party. Do you have any experience uh, with what type of service? Un- unfortunately, no, I, I don't. Uh, again, w- we don't have to deal with that ourselves as, as Finnish nationals. So unfortunately, I, I don't know what to do with it. However, uh, because this is such an, an important topic, if uh, Karina, if you if you just want, um, want to send me a DM, for example, in the Discord server or uh, on Instagram or, for example, in LinkedIn, just uh, resend me the question there and I can try to look into it a bit. Uh, in, in the coming weeks, but uh, for now, out of the top of my head, I, I don't have a have an answer for you. <laughs> All right, the next question. I will jump. Ju- I will jump back into the chat in just a second because there's some good discussion there. However, let's take one question from Arthur, um, and the question is: Hi, Oliver. Just arrived in the live. How are you doing? I'm actually doing really well. Thank you very much. Um, a bit tired. It's been a it's been a long week. Um, I haven't been able to pu- publish any videos, so kind of kind of disappointed. But uh, it's it's been a long week. Uh, next week I will have regular times vid- videos out on Tuesday and Thursday, in addition to the live stream as well. And the question is: As I'm an international student, in case something serious happens, such as an accident or a broken arm, and I need to run to the hospital, will I, will I have to pay for the service, or is it for free? Right. So, the, uh, yeah, uh, let's take this first. So this is actually, excuse me, this is actually the reason why you need to have uh, insurance when you actually come to Finland. So uh, if you come to Finland as an international student, you need to have an insurance that covers your medical expenses to an X amount of money. I don't remember the exact sum, but the Finnish Immigration Service has a very specific list of things that you need to have, or what what the insurance has to cover. Um, I, I'm not sure if your insurance is supposed to cover like accidents like this, or does the Finnish Healthcare Service simply take care of that? I'm not completely sure, or the public system. Um, I would have to check that. I I don't remember, and it would take m- too much time to check here live. Again, if you want to me to check this out, reach out to me, or send me a DM on Discord. I, I will, I can actually check it because I know where to look for it. Um, I, I just don't remember exactly the website. Um, the second question is, if I want to book an appointment with a dentist or a nurse, can I simply do it by using the FSHS? Yes, exa- uh, you can. Uh, and uh, I will get back, back to the, that in just a second. Uh, does the FSHS uh, cover everything or do I need to pay for another healthcare pl- plan? Is there any difference in terms of payment, healthcare plan and uh, the use of services for a student than has a, uh, that has a EU citizenship? If so, what are the differences? Um, I don't remember what the differences are between uh, European Union citizens and other non-European Union citizens. However, let's go back into the I, I, and I don't ac- actually remember the exact details about like international students using uh, the Finnish public healthcare service um, because that is a bit more complicated. However, let's jump back into the FSHS. So any, for anyone who does not know what FSHS is, that is basically the Finnish student healthcare service. So uh, one of the reasons why we have these student unions is that they also cover uh, or what we, why we have student unions and we have to pay a student union fee is that that fee actually goes into paying for our student health care. Finland has an extremely robust, a really good student health care system. Actually, Alexi, Alexi has spoken about this student health care system in his in multiple of his videos. And um, uh, for example, he, he spoke about uh, going to a dentist. I've actually gone to a dentist multiple times during the last year. Um, 
and and last year as well just to do like regular maintenance and it's not only super cheap but it, actually the the healthcare service that you get from the students healthcare service fshs is extremely high quality so i'm i'm like super happy um and if you come to Finland as an international student, you have to be a member of the student union of your university in order to use FSHS uh, services. So, so Arthur, keep in mind that if you come to st study, for example, at Aalto University, you have to be a member of Aalto University Student Union. Uh, if you're not, I don't think you can use FSHS services, again, because th the healthcare system is paid by the student union fee. Then the student union fee is like a hundred euros per per year, so that's not much for to pay for, like almost completely free healthcare. Uh, for most of these services that you will need, like if you need to uh, see a nurse, a dentist, if you if you um, need to speak with be, with a psychologist for like uh, psychology uh, psychological reasons, they cover most of the stuff. Actually, I'll just show this to you. Uh, let me just show this. All right, so FSHS, just put that into Google. So I again, I have a dedicated video about this topic, so go ahead and check my cha check out my channel. I actually go into a lot of detail about FSHS, what kind of services they have, who are who is allowed to use the services, and wor for what costs. However, uh, if we just check super quickly here, uh, they they offer all of the basic services like health examinations, um, uh, birth control, sexual sexual health. Um, which is done excellently in Finland, uh, prevention of infectious diseases, laboratory examinations, imaging appointment services. Uh, if you need certificates or statements for a job or something like this, you can get, get them from there. Uh, for example, the appointment services, you have just a nurse, psycho, uh, uh, psych psychiatric nurses, physiotherapists, general, general practitioners, specialists, oral hygienists, dentists, psychologists, psych psychiatrists, sex counselors, etc. Um, in addition, you have uh, different laboratory services that you can use, um, which are free of charge. However, if you need, need a referral um, by a doctor or a public... Um, uh, however, you will always need a referral by a doctor or a public health nurse. So you, you can't get a laboratory examination unless you have a referral from someone else. Uh, anyways, these are like the services are like stupid cheap. Um, if I give a couple of examples, mm, 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 mm. service fees, dentist, special, uh, a specialized dentist for 40 minutes, 32 euros. That's like, that's like idiotic cheap. Like seriously, if you like, uh, yeah, Alex is actually saying here, I had to, I had four of my wisdom, wisdom teeth removed, uh, for 50 euros. That's nothing. And you can use these services as long as you are a student and, and, and a member of the student union. So really, so I'm, I'm, I'm like serious. If you are admitted to study in Finland, use these services because they're like crazy cheap. And usually the queues are not that long compared to, for example, the public service or public healthcare system. So, I'm sorry, I'm ranting, but... Uh, Again, these are these are these are the type of student benefits that I've been talking about in my videos. One of the reasons why you should really come to study in Finland is that we are really well taken care of as students in in Finland. We have all of these different student discounts and student services, healthcare, public uh, transportation, student apartments that are really cheap. So it's it's worth coming here. Mm. Uh, Koti Center Ploisti, sorry for butchering the name, <laughs> uh, asking, do doctoral students have the same status as master's and bachelor's degree students, or is it different? There are some differences. I don't remember every single one of them. Uh, but for example, what they, the, the biggest differences are, I think, um, that doctoral students are not allowed to use. Uh, uh, actually, just let me check this. Mm. Just a moment. Let's actually check this. 
Right. So, for example, FSHS stu uh, services are just for bachelor's and master's degree students. So if you are a doctoral student, you are not allowed to use FSHS or the student ser uh, healthcare services. Um, this is because, um, if, if I've understood this correctly, um, I think I remember it correctly. Um, this is because being a doctoral student is actually considered as a job in Finland. It, you're not necessarily considered as a student like you are when you are a bachelor's or master's students, uh, student because a doctoral student position is actually a paid position. So there is a bit of a difference. A second big difference here is that uh, most student apartment providers um, will allow you to apply for a student apartments as a, as a doctoral student. However, they will not prioritize you. So you will basically always be at the back of the queue and uh, they will only give you an apartment if there's extra uh, apartments available. So there is kind of like these uh, negatives about it. Um, however, you can actually use a lot of the uh, service, service discounts that are available for students as well. I actually have a, uh, I have a video about student benefits on the channel where I go into more detail about these restrictions. So go ahead and check that out. If you just go to the channel and uh, search for student benefits, you should find the video. So check that out after the stream or right away. You pick the center plus to saying that I believe EU citizens can benefit from the e European Union healthcare card. That is correct. So if you have a U European Union healthcare card, you don't need a uh, you don't need an additional um, uh, health insurance when you when you move to Finland. However, if you don't have a uh, EU healthcare card, then you need to get a get insurance. Yeah, Amy saying that in United States it's just a thousand euros for the for the ambulance, right? Yeah, that's not the way we work here in Finland. We have actually pretty much uh, almost almost uh, our healthcare system is almost like what they have in the UK, where they have the NHS National Health 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 Service. However, I think how it works um, uh, in the UK. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think m most, if not all hospitals, are actually operating under the NHS, so they are all publicly funded. And, or, I'm sorry, they're public uh, hospitals. However, in Finland, we have this mix of public and private uh, health care. Um, and uh, it's actually been a uh, topic of a lot of political fights uh, during the last like 10, 15 years. And there's been a lot of things that have been renewed about it during the last years. And it's a never ending process because no, no, you, there is no way you can make everyone happy because this is a politi pot political question. Anyways, excuse me. Anyways, going back into the, into the form, there's a question from Amy, who comes from India and is applying the next application period to Helsinki University, Alto or the Uni University of Tampere, and uh, specifically to study um, international business. And the question actually was about the FinIPS, the Finnish network for international programs, and uh, whether or not this is something official or sketchy. Fees of around 10,000 euros per year. What? That. All right. Um, <laughs> um, Amy. Let me get back to you. Please send me a message either, uh, for example, in the Discord channel. If you're not yet a member of our Discord channel, uh, please join and uh, I will uh, look a bit deeper into this for you because this sounds really weird to my ear, at least. That doesn't mean that it's sketchy, but I just haven't heard of this and it just sounds a bit weird. Um, guys, if you are not yet members of our Discord channel, I will have a invite link into the channel in the chat right now. Uh, basically, the idea of the channel is to, to, or I'm sorry, the server. The idea of the server is to build a community of people who are interested in studying and working in Finland. And uh, I post a lot of updates about videos as well as we have more personal dialogue inside the server. So, so uh, Amy, just get uh, send me a DM on on the, um, Discord, and I will look a bit deeper into this. All right. The next question comes from. Aaron, and the question is, I just remembered from you, you drinking from your cup that last time you looked at the camera and said Finnish government, it isn't booze, it's just water. So my question is, is it legal to drink booze while in TV shows or live? 
Um, no, but the, the, there's actually pretty strict marketing rules about alcohol in Finland. So, um, yeah, I, for me, for, for example, I cannot be marketing alcohol. Uh, it's fine to have this kind of a cup, but if I'm like pushing alcohol products to you, that would be bas- basically illegal. Um, it's nothing like the uh, uh, rules that, for example, I, I think again in the UK they had like something, some kind of rules about uh, ads on on TV that you have to have. You cannot have like this hidden marketing in in your TV shows, for example. It's a bit similar in Finland, uh, a bit different, um, but with alcohol it's a bit more strict. So again, this is a pint, but it's just water. Talking of which, what are you you guys drinking at the moment? Uh, is it water, juice, something else? And by the way, just let me know in the chat, what is the local time in your country at the moment? In Finland, it's 7.49 at this specific time. Um, all right, next up we have uh, Preti, who comes from India and uh, is... Uh, applying to the Tampere University of Applied Sciences to study professional teacher training pro- in, in a professional teacher training program. Uh, and the question is, this professional teacher training is a non-degree program worth 60 ECTS credits and it lasts for one and a half years. And the question is, but is it, it is a non-degree program, so can it, but since it is a non-degree program, can it be a problem in getting a job further in the field of education? Uh, will I further to uh, will I get a residence permit for uh, for work afterwards? And will there be any problem in res- resi- in my residence permit applications during my studies? That's uh, a really good question. Um, if it's a non-degree program, I you really have to make sure that it's not going to be a an issue. Um, First of all, uh, about the actual uh, like education. So depending on what the certification is for from this program, you might have limitations on on what kind of a teacher you you can beco- become. Um, in Finland, actually, this is something that a lot of people talk about. Fin- f- the Finnish education system, uh, for example, in different documents, is that um, the Finnish education system is so highly regarded. Partly because uh, we have extremely highly educated teachers. So basically, becoming a teacher requires you to have a master's degree in in education. So having a non-degree program in professional teaching, um, I'm not sure what that actually means in terms of your like qualification. So you need to check this out. What I recommend you to do is to send an email to the. Tampere University of Applied Sciences and ask this exact same question from them because they will have a definite answer for you. Yevgenia, welcome to the live stream. Awesome to have the first member of the channel in the live stream. I really appreciate it. Um, I wasn't able to send you a message uh, after the last live stream, but thank you so much for joining as a channel member, I appreciate that more than you can actually think or understand. It it, it means the uh, the world to me. Um, actually, a selfless selfless plug here, guys. If you're actually getting value out of these streams, first of all, I would really recommend that you uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, have all notifications on, so that you won't miss any updates when I actually post videos. Second, uh, if you are getting value, please hit the like button. That will tell YouTube that you're actually getting some value out of this, these live streams and that will uh, help uh, you to push this live stream a bit more to other people as well. And finally, if you're actually getting value out of the the channel and all the videos and live streams that I'm doing, do consider joining as a member uh, to the channel. I currently have four different membership levels and uh, you can see all the different perks and benefits that you get as a member. Uh, If you click the, um, I think it's maybe this way or this way, next to the subscribe button, you should see a join button. And if you just click the join button, you will see all the perks that you actually get as a member. And uh, just know I appreciate you guys so much uh, for supporting me 
uh, you're the only reason why I'm actually able to do this full time. And uh, I'm very, uh, I basically owe everything to you guys. And that's why I, I really hope that you're getting some value out of these long, long, long live streams. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yevgenia. I'm sorry, you really, please. Actually, would you mind sending me a, a DM on uh, on the Discord server? Um, you can actually send me an audio, audio message uh, if you send me it as a DM. And just please help me learn how to pronounce your name. I love Russian because it's such such a beautiful name, but... Or the... the um, uh, Russian language and, and all the kind of Slavic languages that we have. Uh, but it's so difficult for me to, to pronounce the, the names because there's too many consonants uh, uh, all over the place. Uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Any, <laughs> anyhow, uh, the next question comes from Feti. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for the super chat as well. Um, I, I do appreciate it so 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 much. Um, this five euros is going to my going into my uh, espresso. Uh, what was it? Alexi said it pretty well. Espresso fund there in my piggy bank, and um, I really need to have like this physical biggie bank here with all the all the coins from the super chats because I do appreciate it. Um, I actually need some coffee to the the uh, office, so I, I'll just go and buy some espresso beans tomorrow. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Um, Orange Machine, uh, I have not yet finished my master's studies. I just have to finish my damn thesis. I don't have any courses left. I've been working on my thesis for almost two years. It's been a bit of a working progress. I've been working full time for the last five years, so it's been uh, pretty hard to, to actually focus on the thesis. Uh, it was, I'm actually, my, my major um, in my master's is entrepreneurship and innovation management, uh, which actually is not going to be there. It's actually canceled. So there's no um, future master programs in that specific field um, or specialization. Um, but I've done some courses from ISM and they're really, really nice. So I really recommend them. Uh, anyhow, uh, I will ba jump back into the form again, just re remind everyone who has just joined the stream. If you have a question that you would like me to answer live, uh, if you post it into the live chat, it is highly likely that I will miss the question. So if you want me to answer your question during the live stream, post your question into the Google form that is linked in the description box all the way uh, at the bottom of the description box below. Uh, that will mean that I will be able to uh, answer your questions in a first come serve, first serve basis. Anyhow, the next question comes from Fethi who comes from Algeria and is a starting school this semester at Aldom, controls, uh, specifically in the field of control systems and automation, which is really, really cool. And uh, there's a couple of questions. First, could I land a job in the industry in Finland if my master's degree is obtained outside of Finland? Yeah, definitely. No reason why you couldn't. Um, assuming uh, I am in Finland at the time of application. Yeah, why not? I, I, absolutely. Um, there is, so a lot of people are asking me, you know, whether or not you're able to find a job in Finland as an international, not, <clears throat> not even as an international student, but as an international job seeker. If you have a degree, if you have a bachelor's or a master's degree, depending on the field, what is actually required, and you're actually good at what you do, you can definitely find jobs in Finland but it's not going to be easy. So if you guys haven't yet seen, um, I will show you uh, a new video series that I've started uh, that I, I really recommend that you guys check out. Um, so if you go to the channel uh, all the way to the bottom, you can actually see that I have this new video series uh, called Interviews with Recruitment Experts. And... Uh, I posted this video last week and I actually interviewed... Oh, my face is so... Bleh. I actually interviewed Saku Tiverainen, who is a very seasoned recruitment professional from Finland uh, with over 10 years of experience in, in working both in Finland and in Edinburgh. And um, we spoke for 40 minutes about job seeking in Finland as an international job uh, applicant, uh, specifically from the per perspective of a student. 
However, I actually have multiple interviews booked for the next few weeks and I will start pushing out this kind of content as well because you you guys have been requesting um, these kind of interviews. In these intervie- interviews, we go really deep and detailed into uh, the current situation with the job market in Finland, practical tips on how to find jobs, where to find jobs, how to network in Finland, uh, all of this kind of stuff. So if you have any questions that you would like me to a- ask future uh, in future interviews, please let me know in the chat, in the comments, in Discord, uh, anywhere on social, or, or for example, in the comments of, of this first interview. I really like having these kind of discussions because I know that it's not easy to find a job, and I don't want you guys to only get my perspective because... Of course, I don't have that much experience, even though I've been actually working in the recruitment field. But I would rather have multiple, uh, like, really good experts from who are actually recruiting people every single day answer these questions for 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 you, because that that way you can actually know that this is legit information. So I really hope that you enjoy this kind of content. It's it's a new series, and. uh, um, I would love to get as much feedback on it as possible. Anyways, the next question comes from Vasilis, who comes from Greece and uh, is applying e- to study in Finland in the next application period and uh, is interested in doing a de- degree in civil or structural engineering. And uh, the question is, I want to study in Alta University. The master's program is called Building Technology. Um and I really want to take some lessons around 8 to 40 ECTS degrees from a bachelor's program called Computational Mechanics. Can I take more than 180 ECTS? Are the additional lessons going to be included in my master's? That's a that's a good question. Uh, so 180 ECTS credits. So do you mean your entire master's? Oh, yeah, I think you do. So yeah, I, I, definitely. You can, you can take as many courses as you want as long as you stay within your uh, uh, study right or or the the allotted time that you have for your for for your degree, um, I don't think that your extra courses are going to be involved in like your official uh, degree transcript. However, they are going to be included in your course listing. So the, all the courses that when we uh, when we graduate, we get get this kind of like folder with a lot of official documents. And I think we have a like full list of different courses that we have done and all the all the grades. And I'm sure that those courses will also be listed in that l- big list. However, they will not be included in your degree because uh, you cannot fit more than 180 credits in your personal study plan, which is like the official degree plan that you have. Um, However, you can take as many courses as you want. And um, of course, just simply take into account that you don't have, it's not necessary to have all courses in your degree certificate for them to actually bring value to you. Not only, of course, you you would naturally be taking some of the courses because you're interested to learn more. And uh, you can always use those as arguments, for example, when you apply for jobs that, okay, in addition to my kind of official degree, I've also taken this and this course about this topic. And I've done like a minor, uh, the I've done a minor scope of extra studies alongside my normal, normal degree. Definitely. Why not? Um, it's, you, you will lose, you don't lose anything. Uh, from doing it um uh, do do note that uh if you want to do uh, uh an x amount of courses from a bachelor's level program um some of those deg- courses might not be able to you're, you might not be able to involve or include all of those courses in your master's um uh, master's level personal study plan because they are bachelor's level courses some of them i'm sure that you, you can include in your um what are these called uh, additional studies i don't remember the exact term um, you can include some of them but just make sure to check your study coordinator who always who who accepts your personal study plan um, that those courses are something that you can actually involve in your degree and you should be you should be golden All right. Are you asking or uh, not believing that the that uh, a 
apparently not believing that this is water, but the the weird red purple juice that I always drink. No, <laughs> this is actually just water trying to hydrate after a long day. Awesome. All right, the next question comes from Denise, and uh, the question is intercultural teaching education uh, at the University of Oulu is a department that that attracted my attention. Have you ever been to Oulu University or do you know anything about that university? My second question is, is Finland good for someone like me who is very interested in education and wants to be a teacher? If you ch want to check out that uh, department, uh, you, I have a link here, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's take your second question first. So the question, is Finland good for someone like me who is very interested in education and wants to be a teacher? Absolutely, yes. Finland ranks as the number one country in the entire world in primary education for a good reason. We, in addition, we rank as the third best in the entire world in higher education, um, meaning that we have the third uh, best skill sets from university graduate or with university graduates uh, as measured globally. Finland, in Finland, we appreciate education over so many other things. Teachers in Finland are extremely highly respected, especially in primary school. Uh, they're well paid, and and uh, we we really want to take good care of our teachers because we know how much value they bring to the society and how many how much re, uh, how many uh, uh, how much they have to put in work to actually bring up our kids to become good citizens. So there's so much respect towards teachers, even if we gripe about examinations sometimes, but still we really respect teachers here. So in that terms, absolutely yes. Um, of course, it depends on what do you want to teach. Uh, for example, you, for you, that would be maybe history, philosophy, or teaching, uh, or teaching, teaching, history or philosophy. But for example, if you want to become a, a professor at a university teaching history or philosophy, oh, dude, there's, we, there's actually we have <laughs> there's actually this one do, uh, guy called uh, Esa Saarinen, who is a, a super well known. Uh, philo philosophy professor in Finland uh, who lectures all across the country and abroad as well and he's extremely well liked uh, by like every fin Finnish person and uh, um, he has brought philosophy into the Finnish people's minds and especially like university students and his philosophy courses are the only courses at Aalto University that that are, that are able to fill up the largest audit or auditorium at the at the campus every single year, and there's always overflow, so people actually aren't able to fit into the auditorium because it's always full. And uh, people retake his courses even though they don't get any uh, credits from the courses anymore, but because people love him so much and love what he's saying so much that they retake the courses year after year and even even after they graduate. And he he actually. Uh, educates and, and lectures to a lot of, for example, business leaders in Finland as well. So some of the biggest uh, publicly traded companies in Finland actually hire SSR and to come to talk to the corporate uh, managers, for example. So in this kind of case, um, uh, in this case, teaching is absolutely yes. I would say, yeah. Um, Yevgenia is asking, what about children's attitude towards teachers? Do they respect them? So uh, this is actually a, a di difficult topic because I would say that yes, absolutely. The problem is that with the with these machines, the attention span of students, especially younger kids, has decreased ready. Um, re pretty radically and uh, there's been a quite a lot of problems during the last few years uh, with the um, authority of the teachers towards their students or pupils because of these um, in Finland for example teachers teachers are very limited in in the ways that they can discipline the, the pupils which is good however that has also caused some issues because there's been a lot of problems with some students and especially with the electronic uh, electronics that they want to use during the classes and uh, 
this has caused a lot of discussion about where has the respect towards teachers from the side of pupils gone. But on the other hand, they, you know, young young kids are always uh, trying to rebel in some some way. So you know, we had our problems twenty years ago, and and now nowadays they have their problems. Uh, however, if you, for example, think about it like parents, for example, the the thing about Finland is is uh, if you, for example, look at like primary school, so from age uh, seven to uh, what is it, uh, seven to 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 twelve, fifteen, no. From seven to, to fourteen, sorry. Um, for example, I had one teacher, or we had one like class teacher during that entire time, or like this main teacher. Of course, history and and sports and this kind of stuff were actually taught by someone else. But we usually stay with the same teacher who teaches uh, like math, uh, Finnish, potentially even Swedish or other languages throughout the entire primary school. So this creates this very strong bond between the teacher and the pupil or, or uh, their class and especially with, um, considering the parents in Finland because they know they they basically uh, interact with the same teacher who is in charge of their kids for the entirety of their school so seven years to primary school then uh, three years for middle school and th then to high school the, of course the teachers change at those points but uh, the teachers and the parents also have a very close, uh, relationship. So in this sense, this works extremely well. And I think that it's one of the reasons why we have such a success in primary education in Finland. Um, but yeah, it's, it's difficult, uh, difficult to, to say more. Uh, yeah, so, so uh, the name of, um, the Finnish philosopher, uh, is Esa Saarinen, uh, a really cool, cool, uh, guy. Actually, all of his, uh, lectures from Aalto University, they're actually public on YouTube. However, they're in Finnish. Uh, I don't think that they have translations uh, to English, but it's it's really really cool. Right, Ariana saying that I've been teaching for six years uh, in, um, and cell phones are pro prohibited in primary schools unless they are asked to bring them. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a bit of a problem, but uh, we we have to learn how to live with it. Anyhow, I'm getting um, uh, basically sidelined a bit, so. Back to the, the questions. The next one comes from Arctic Strange. And the question is, Oliver, I'm about to board a flight now. So if it's possible, give me a quick possible answer on this. Whoops, that I think that my, the moment might have passed. Do you remember seeing any Indian students, student communities in Aalto University or in the city? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> uh, definitely. There's uh, plenty of Indian students in, for example, at Aalto University. Um, I, I haven't necessarily seen like Indian communities or communities uh, based on on different nationalities because a lot of people um in in at at, at least at Aalto university they're very international so we actually kind of mingle mingle up and, and group up with the international groups so i would say that try not to silo yourself uh and hang out just with your own nationals uh, of course i know that that helps with for example home, homesickness etc however you should definitely try to get to know local students other uh, international students as much as possible um, uh, because that is uh, it just makes your experience better uh yevgeny asking what is the involvement of parents in their children's education do finnish parents have to do homework with children um, yeah, that's a really good question. Of course, I, I can only reflect from my own, ex own experience. For example, our parents, <clears throat> our parents didn't give us any pressure on school, so they didn't. I don't remember them ever asking us to do any homework. Plus, you have to take take into account that Finnish uh, students, uh, especially in primary school, we have a very small amount of schoolwork or homework. We do have. It's it's a myth, or some people say that Finnish students don't have any uh, homework. That is a myth. Uh, that is a lie we do have but it's very uh, very small amount um so i don't remember having any pressure from school before like high school when we had to start studying to the final exams um i don't remember my parents giving us any pressure and then taking into account that my brother is doing his phd so we didn't and we didn't end up that badly <laughs> academically speaking so uh in Finland, our education system is so much more relaxed. But yeah, definitely the parents are very much involved in their kids' education, especially because we have this very close relationship with the teachers. So 
I guess. Again, that's that's 20 years ago. So mm, hard to say. Uh, Arpit asking, what do you do for a living? I actually do this. I am a full-time YouTuber nowadays because of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, I I actually am able to do this full-time nowadays. I used to work as a marketing specialist at a recruitment company in Finland, specializing in hiring uh, university-educated people. Uh, but I actually resigned from my full-time full, full day, full -time job in September to do YouTube full-time. Actually, in addition, I actually have a technology startup that I'm working on with a couple of other people. However, this is what um, where I get my uh, salary from. So that is really cool to be able to actually do this full-time. Anyhow, next question comes from Topoyo. Topoyo and... Um, the question is, hi Oliver, is there, is there any difference between a copy and a photocopy? I, I think you're talking about the the documents that you have to send to the university. Um, I, I don't, Honestly, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I have no idea. If you have any questions about the documents that you have to send certified to the university, do contact please contact the university directly using their admission services email um for example for uh the university of helsinki i think the uh blah, 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 blah. let me see i'll just pull this out for you really quickly yeah uh so Topoyo, the for the University of Helsinki admission services, the email is admissions, that's uh, plural, admissions at helsinki.fi. Uh, B Rain, if you had your question in the chat, it is highly likely that I missed it. Uh, if you have a question that you would like me to answer live, please post your question into the Google form that I have linked in the description box below. Um, the thing is that the... Uh, the ch live chat gets really busy at times and I, I, I am going to miss a lot of the questions that if you have them in the chat. Um, I will jump back and forth from the f form into the chat one, every once in a while, but I will definitely miss questions there. So if you want, want me to answer your question and I would definitely will do it, please post a question into the Google form and I will get to it uh, in a first come first serve basics basis there's not that many questions left so i'm i'm definitely going to have the time to answer your question during the stream uh anyways the next question comes from nicolo 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 traboni who comes from the dominican republic that's cool uh and uh, he's applying to study in the uh, in finland in the next application period at xamk mikkeli campus Awesome. Uh, to and wants to become an IT engineer. Awesome. There's a ton of demand for software developers in Finland, so definitely recommend it. Uh, a couple of hints: uh, if you are interested in doing cloud, um, anything ha having to do with the cloud, uh, uh, 3D uh, uh, software, um, game engines, games in general. Uh, mobile development, especially like mobile iOS development, that is something that's very rare in Finland. And then there's like embedded, if you're an embedded software developer, so basically working really close to the hardware, those those are like super in demand uh, uh, skills. So if you want to like look at what kind of uh, specializations are good for your career prospects, cloud, mobile, embedded, uh, and anything that has to do with games. So those are uh, some of the things that you should definitely consider. Uh, the question is, are there any student loans for EU citizens for studying in Finland? I want to study in Finland, but I don't have the resources to do so. Uh, no, unfortunately, the uh, student loans that are guaranteed by the Finnish government are only for Finnish citizens. However, if you, since you are um, uh, for EU citizens, there is no tuition fees. Mm, however, uh, of course, as a as a citizen of a of Dominican Republic, you are uh, required to pay tuition fees, so it, it is going to be a problem. However, again, remember that all Finnish universities have good scholarship options. I have a video. I have multiple videos about scholarships in on the channel, so please go ahead and check those out I, either right away or after this live stream. Just go to the the uh, channel 
main page and you can I actually have a playlist about tuition fees and scholarships and check all the videos about the scholarships. If you cannot afford to study in Finland because of the tuition fees, you should still apply because they, they have good scholarship options. Of course, the, the scholarships are only granted to the best students um, best students uh, who apply. So um, you really have to work hard in order to get a scholarship. However, that is a realistic way of actually studying in Finland for free. So unfor unfortunately, there are no student, gover at least government uh, guaranteed student loans for uh, no, uh, others than Finnish uh, citizens. All right, moving further. Um, the next one, next question comes from Feti, uh, and the question is: Are all the university technical departments or the faculty of uh, engineering connected to the industry? Are there some pro prospects to be connected to the industry and conduct some projects with them during your studies? Definitely. So, actually, you will be you will basically start connecting with. Uh, industry representatives and companies from day one um, depending of, of course on the courses that you take but I remember that in the school of business like the second course that we did uh, we had like a case we had to do a, like a case project for a big Finnish company so uh, at Aldo University or Aldo University does a huge amount of different kind of uh, collaboration with the industry and, and the companies there so you will absolutely have a chance to um show your skills to to industry representatives and it's actually a really good way of like getting your foot um in between the door uh for future job hunting um so yeah yes the answer is yes absolutely ah okay nicolas nicolas saying that i live in the dominican republic but i have a eu citizenship and a european union passport in the, okay in that case you don't have to pay any tuition fees on the other hand you, you're not allowed to apply for uh scholarships either uh, because they're only for those who have to pay tuition so if you if you want to study in finland the only thing that you need to cover is your living costs so again um the minimum that you would need to have per month is 560 euros for your living costs. Again, kind of repeating myself from uh, what I said previously, 560 euros, especially in the capital region, is not that much. You can go buy with it. However, depending on how expensive your apartment is, you will not most likely have that much money on left on your bank account after the month. So you would most likely have to skip a lot of the kind of the fun stuff that you can do. Um, however, if you're able to to have that 560, 600, 700 euros per month for living costs, then definitely apply to study in Finland. Uh, again, because you don't have to pay tuition. So I really recommend it. Um, Atrion asking, any advice on how to make Finnish friends? I feel like uh, it's really difficult. It, it is. Um, it's really difficult or I'm, I don't want to say that it's difficult to make friends out of Finns, but it takes time and devotion. Alex actually has multiple videos about then, uh, this and he has been speaking about this quite a lot, uh, like making Finnish friends and actually dating a Finnish person. And uh, I'm sure that you, you can actually give uh, a, a comment to this as well. But what what it takes to make a friend out of a Finnish person, especially since we can feel like we're a bit reserved when you, you meet us for the first time, is that you need time and patience. Um, you really need to put yourself into it and uh, just keep in mind that if you come from a culture where it is common to have this uh, you scratch my back, I scratch your back type of, type of mentality where like uh, uh, friendships are based on like giving stuff or giving services or... Uh, uh, whatever they are, that doesn't really exist in Finland. Rather, we usually we pre prefer not hanging out with those type of people at all. Rather, we just want to have good friends. We have a lot of acquaintances and, like, for example, colleagues, of course, and we come by, we come well. Uh, uh, what am I saying? We get really well with other people as well. However, if you really want this deep, 
meaningful relationships you really have to work for uh, uh, to actually get them uh, it's not going to be easy uh, so I'm sorry it's not going to be fast that's what I'm trying to say uh, yeah uh, orange machine unfortunately I've actually um, I don't allow links into the chat because they they are very often um, used in to uh, with uh, for wrong purposes uh, there's for example a lot of these link mining type of uh, websites that have bots spamming links and when you click them they basically get your information so um, like the best practice for YouTube is not to allow links in the live chat um, if if you want to me to share like a link you could for example uh, post it in the in the Google form and I, I can check it and then then share it to the chat it, it, it's gonna take a while but uh, unfortunately I can't allow the links because I, I'm not able to watch the live stream and keep an eye on it and and, and remove everything in real time if there's any any dirty stuff there for example Natalie saying that the first time I saw your video I thought you were a US citizen living in Finland but now I concluded you're Finnish <laughs> yeah th this is actually something that people have been asking me I'm not sure if it's the my English or or my accent or something something like this um, but yeah I'm, I'm a born national Finnish citizen I actually was born in Helsinki so the capital and uh, I've lived here um, the entirety of my life except for three months in Germany uh, in the summer of 2016 Anyhow, back into the form and to the questions. And the next question comes from Chatnia. Chaitnia, Chaitnia, sorry. Um, who is already studying in Finland. I'm sorry, is <laughs> applying to study in Finland in the next next application period to Ressu High School. Mm, that's interesting. All right, that's really cool. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that no one else knows what Ressu is. Uh, Ressu High School is basically the one of the best high schools in Finland, uh, located in Helsinki. Um, they have a very high GPA requirement in order to get in um, to the high school. And uh, uh, Chaitnya is, is saying that uh, 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 he is uh, specifically going to do an uh, IB board diploma, which is really nice. And the question is, I want to know what can a child the age 15 who is studying at a Finnish high school work. I'm sorry, hey, well, just a second. I want to know that cannot transfer. <laughs> um, right, so, okay, so the question is, is that can a child, uh, a 15 year old child basically um, work part-time while doing high school? So for example, for a bit of pocket money uh, at, a, at a supermarket. Um, that's a really good question. I don't know the answer from the top of my head. You mentioned the 25 hours a week re uh, restriction. I don't think that applies to f to high school or to children. So that's basically if you are in Finland with a student visa for a for a bachelor's or a master's degree. Uh, Chaitnya, actually, if you if you wouldn't mind, please send me a DM on Instagram, LinkedIn, or or at the in the Discord server. I would actually love to check that for you because. Um, oh, sorry, Warrior Mage. I will I will link the the Discord channel. Just server, just a second. So anyway, so Chaitnya, please send me a message on any of the the platforms that that I use. Um, All right, Warrior Mage, thank you for the spamming and the pinging. Um, the link to the Discord server is there. Anyways, Ch Chaitnya, please send me a message on any of these uh, services. I will gladly be glad to help you with this because this is a very important topic. However, I don't have an answer to you here here live. Um, uh, I, and I, I really don't want to give you any false information because it's, it's about... Uh, 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 if I'm I'm correct, it's about your your child. So I really want to give you the the correct information. I'm, I want to be sure that I give you actually correct information. So Yevgenia, it's pronounced like that. Awesome. <laughs> so the next question comes from Yevgenia. Yevgenia, 
the, the question my question is do I actually pronounce the the Y uh, the the second Y as a J or is it just uh, an I so Yevgen Yevgenia or Yevgenia is it does it have a like a J like curve or is it um, I, I've never learned how to pronounce um, uh, I don't even know what I'm saying anyways just let me know um, Anyhow, the, 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 she comes from Lithuania, and again, the question is: Do you think what? What do you think of tourism management? What kind of jobs can it can it, would it be applicable to? I'm hu hugely interested in this field, but I'm a bit cautious at the moment because I can't find enough information about the responsible tourism, about the the uh, about risk about responsible tourism. I'm interested in masters and a PhD. And what personal features are required as well to become successful during these studies? Uh, a bunch of really interesting questions. Um, so, okay, Yevgenia, cool. <laughs> Thank you. So that's a, that's a bunch of really interesting questions, and these are many of them are very difficult for me to answer because um, that would require me to have personal experience in the in the field. However, our dad actually has has done um, a long career in hospitality. Um, working with hotels and, and uh, restaurants and uh, he's currently working in not in hospitality anymore but in, in another field in Lapland and we talk quite a bit about uh, the local tourism industry so I, I might have some perspectives from there um, so what I what do I think about tourism management and the studies I, I, th I say that of course this year and and the whole COVID thing has kind of put a lid on tourism and travel however uh, international travel however that does not mean that travel international travel and tourism isn't coming back and my guess is that next year if and when we get the vaccination hopefully and we get it actually distributed to enough people International travel is going to coming back with a boom. So basically, people are like running to the airport to get plane tickets to to get out of their home city because people have been stuck in, in their home country for a year or over a year. So I think that international tourism is is coming back with a really big boom. Um, the the question about responsible tourism is is a really good one, and depends of course on your perspective. For example, does uh, responsible tourism mean, mean does responsible tourism mean uh, carbon neutral tourism and travel? Does it mean responsible like locally that you actually use your local services or what what your what is your ah, what is your perspective? Um, there is not that much information about the top uh, about this topic, but I think that these study tourism management studies will definitely cover these topics because they're so time um, time sensitive and, and they're very current topics. Um, Doing a master's in, in this field, definitely a good thing. I'm not sure if the PhD is relevant. I have uh, just my opinion. However, if you're looking into uh, specializing more inside of the field, like actually uh, doing a PhD in like uh, international travel or, or, or have a more spe specialized field or research question or area for your PhD, then I think that would be extremely interesting. Um, Again, just my personal opinion. Um, but about the personal features that are required to do well uh, during the studies, time management, definitely. In Finland, we are extremely independent with our studies. So no one is going to be behind, uh, breathing behind, uh, breathing behind, uh, ah, for... expletive. In Finland, we are extremely independent with our studies at the university at a university level. No one is going to be breathing down your neck, which is really cool because that means that no one is going to be, you know, checking that you do your homework or that you study for your exams. However, that also means that for many people who come from cultures where students are not necessarily that independent and uh, where uh, where young people are not that independent, for example, from some in some countries, people stay at their parents for quite a long time. As a contrast, in Finland, it is completely normal that um, people move out from their parents the second that they get a um, uh, university, uh, they get into 
a university because pe- people want to live on their own. So this has, this basically teaches Finnish people this certain type of independence that some cultures don't have. And that's, this means that some people are are very in a lot of um, it, it might be challenging for some people to ha- learn this kind of independence and time management and and being able to take care of not only your studies but your life at the same time. But I, I think that that's one thing. So time management, uh, learning, actually learning to do enough but not too much. So people are burning out nowadays way too easily, meaning that you have to learn to give yourself a break and you have to learn to say done is better than perfect. Uh, this also applies to, I know a lot of people who who are p- pretty much perfectionists and who want to have like excellent careers and that's why they think that the GPA is going to be everything. And I actually know personally quite a lot of people who have, a, our grading system in Finland is from zero to five, so zero is failed, five is best. Um, a lot of people have gone and, and redone their entire course because they have gotten like a four out of five, which is completely idiotic. It's absolutely use, useless. There's no reason to do redo your exams if you get a four out of five. There's there's absolutely no use for that, uh, especially if you have a generally good GPA anyways. So you have to learn how to like like let go and uh, done is better than perfect. That is something that people are, are uh, struggling with. And then I say, I'd say that something that a lot of people struggle with is, well, two practical skills. Simply having the patience to read a lot. Uh, in Finnish universities, especially like university level versus University of Applied Sciences, we we read a lot of academic articles, and they are they're often very hard to read. The language is pretty hard to understand. And uh, one article can easily take like three hours to read, if if it's long enough. So you have to have enough patience to actually like dig deep and and, and try to understand what you're reading, especially because most of the stuff is going to be completely new to you. And then this, the the final thing I would say that a lot of people struggle with is, is simply knowing how to write good and uh, fluent text. Um, a lot of people in high school they don't. Uh, write that much like essays or, or journals or whatever and I would actually recommend that if, if you want to learn how to read well start writing a journal because that is going to teach you how to like try to make a text flow uh, because it's not only about like the things that you put on paper it's how you put things on paper that is going to matter quite a lot when you're studying I- I'm not sure if this uh, answered your question at all but these are at least the things that I've personally noticed that that have a lot of use that you have a lot of use for during your studies Uh, Amir, uh, about uh, your question about uh, SATs, basically, or specifically, is it necessary to, necessary to take SAT exams for uh, for bachelor's degrees in Finland for non-European Union st- students? So your citizenship has nothing to do whether or not on on whether or not you need to take SATs. It is pure purely about the degree that you're applying to. So when you ap- apply to study in Finland and you know the university and the degree that you want to apply to please go to the university website to the application uh, to the degree specific application website and check out the exact application requirements that are detailed on that website some schools do require you to de- take SATs some don't some take uh, require you to take GREs or IELTS or TOEFLs or whatever so please check the individual university and the degree it's always dependent on the university and the degree that you take uh Yevgenia, you're welcome and actually to the your other question uh do university rankings matter a lot in finland eh, i don't think so of course people want to get into the best university like um in the field of engineering and arts and design alto university would be the best one uh in the fields of medicine um and and, and a lot of hard sciences like uh, uh physics or math the university of Helsinki is absolute number one but again then we all of our universities are very high level compared to globally so i would say that it's not as important as you would think like if you were, were in in the the us for example Anyhow, let's get forward uh, forward with the the questions in the form. Next one comes from Andrea. 
Awesome to have you here again on the stream. I hope you're still live to hear the answer. Um, if you are actually live, Andrea, would you like to let me know in the chat so that I know that whether or not I have been loitering too much <laughs> and missed you completely. Um, the question is, I need some advice on what choice of school I put on the application. Ranking from one to five since I... Um, Ranking from one to five. I read that if you don't get in the first school you choose, the second one will be more difficult to get in. Um, thank you, Oliver. I'm sorry for the confusing wording. Uh, no, no, it's not confusing at all. So what Andrea is talking about is that if when you apply to study in Finland using the joint application system, uh, during autumn, so in the autumn application period, you have to you can apply to up uh, up to six different programs at the same in the with the same application form. When you apply using this joint application system, by the way, I have a video explaining this in detail next week. It's this is a super complicated topic, so try to or bear with me. Uh, using the joint application form. In the autumn application period, you have to put uh, the the schools in priority order, and if you are not admitted to the priority number, uh, uh, your number one school or choice, then you will be um, accepted to the second one if you have enough points. If 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 you don't have enough points to that, you will then be accepted to the third and so on. Um, and and this this thing about uh, if you don't get into the first the school of your first choice you will then the, the uh, getting inside the second one will, will be more difficult to get in i don't think that's true so uh w one of the reasons why people say this at least i know that some finnish people say this is that um when you apply with this joint application you get like these extra points for having a specific school as a priority but the number of points that you get extra for that number one priority is, is actually not that much so uh, I, I don't think that's going to matter that much, at least, I think. So uh, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Um, again, Andrea, if you are live, just let me know if, if anything was unclear. I'd love to elaborate elaborate on this topic. But again, I have a video coming about this. Oh, cool, you're still here. All right, so please let me know if, if anything was unclear here. Um, again, I have a video coming about this specific topic next week. I already got the script ready today. I'm going to film it tomorrow and then I just have to um, uh, schedule it for next week or the sec the week after after uh, I've um, uh, ran it through m one of my sponsors um, but I, I go into detail about the joint application system there so um, yeah I, I hope this answered your question because I'm, I'm, I'm not completely sure So yeah, Yevgenia is saying that LOL. I was just thinking about uh, the Lapin Uliopis or the University of University of Lapland, but I saw that it's not so highly uh, as highly ranked as it could be. They have the program I'm hugely interested in, so I thought whether ranking was influent would influence um, the job opportunities. No, I, I don't think so at all. One of the re again consider that many of the Dig specific degree programs that you for that you are for example looking at the especially like tourism manage management that is not taught at every single university in Finland so that is why for example you should not look blindly at the rankings because for example at Aalto University I'm not even sure if we have tourism management like mm, I don't think so mm, yeah no Yeah, we don't even have tourism management uh, at Aalto University, so I think that is something that the University of o, uh, the Uni University of Lapland had specifically, and of course they're going to focus on a lot of the teaching. Most likely, is going to focus on the kind of the tourism industry that you have in in northern Finland, which is really interesting. So again, don't look at the the rankings blindly, because uh, if you my my honest opinion is always that if you find a specific degree that you're interested in and you find a university that is providing that degree and you think that you're able to get admitted into that university don't look at the rankings just apply your job oppor uh, career opportunities do not rely on the ranking they rely fully on your personal capabilities your uh, ability to do well in school your uh, 
openness to work, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, right, it's the only university that offers that program. Well, then, then that's completely clear. Just apply. Don't don't even look at the ranking. Again, the rankings are a, a difficult topic because they they the, one of the big or there's two big things that affect the rankings, especially globally to with universities. Number one, usually with the rankings, is the level of the quantity and the quality of published research from that university. So if you don't have professors at the university who publish a lot of really good uh, peer-reviewed um, research papers, then, then your ranking is going to be a bit lower. Um, so, for example, if the University of Lapland doesn't focus on pu publishing research, that would naturally mean that their ranking is not going to be as high, but that's not also not their goal. While, for example, uh, the University of Helsinki, which is the highest ranking university in Finland in, in a lot of fields, they are very research oriented. So they do a lot of, a lot of research, plus their courses are actually very research oriented compared to, for example, like Aalto University. So Orange Machine saying actually this pretty well. So there's a saying in Finland that the best school is the school, the one next door. So yeah, that does not apply to universities like in the literal sense. That actually comes from the primary education. Um, how, however, the, I think that is true in a sense that the best university is the one providing the a degree that you're interested in. Because it doesn't matter if you apply to the highest ranking university in the country, if you apply to study a, a degree that you're not interested in at all, because the, if you're not interested in the degree, you will not you will not put any effort into actually studying. And if you don't put any interest in studying, or uh, if you don't pu don't put any effort into studying because you're not interested, you will get bad grades, uh, which means that finding a job those first jobs is going to be difficult and that is going to kind of snowball the negative effects. However, if you if you apply to a less highly ranked university, but you're super interested in what you do and you like have all of your hobbies around your degree, that means that you're going to put, uh, put a lot of effort into it. You're going to be super interested in it. So you you can you can do better. You can do much better in your career than like a Stanford graduate if you're just super into it, into whatever you're doing. Because interest is always like the mother of proficiency and and and, and knowledge. Uh, so again, this is a bit different. For example, in the states, because if you get it like into Harvard or Stanford or Oxford or whatever, then you will have automatic good pro career prospects because you have you have gotten into one of these Ivy League schools doesn't work like this in Finland so anyways moving forward the next question comes from Pilar from Nigeria who is starting a school this semester in digital international business and the question is is it possible to use um, is it possible to use your current driver's license in Finland as an international student is it possible to have a driving job and finally, do you have any idea about the fil film industry in Finland? Uh, about the film industry? No, I don't have any idea about it. Um, I, ha I actually had a long discussion about this with a, with a, uh, uh, a student uh, when we went to Lapland uh, in September. But uh, uh, my understanding was that the fil film industry in Finland is pretty s still pretty small. And uh, if you really want to have good like career opportunities, you should probably go abroad in, in the film industry. Again, I don't have experience myself, but this is kind of the gist that I got. Uh, about driver's licenses in Finland, if you have a driver's license in your own country, it is highly likely that you're allowed to drive with that driver's license in Finland. Um, basically, there is a global like driver's license agreement, whatever it is, that uh, says that if you have a driver's license in one country, you're pretty pretty much allowed to drive in almost any other country in the world. There's only a few exceptions to this. There's only a few exceptions to this. So if you have a driver's license, you're most likely allowed to drive here. Uh, about uh, like having a driving job, like uh, driving a taxi or Uber or s something like this, uh, do know that you have to take tests and you have to get certified as a taxi driver. So it's not like you can just start, start doing it. Uh, however, however, yes, you could. Uh, if you want to drive anything larger than a... a uh, 
like a normal personal car like if you want to drive a lorry or anything like this you need to have a specialized driver's license for that and if you have a specialized driver's license from abroad i am not sure whether or not that that it makes you eligible to drive a lorry in finland so you have to check that Yevgeny, of course that is the reason why this channel exists plus you are the first member on on this channel so i appreciate that so much uh, i'm simply happy to help <laughs> yeah I'm, i'm getting a bit tired um moving on next question comes from alexandra who comes from romania and uh, is starting school this semester awesome at the obo academy academy university so basically the university which is in turku the city of Turku, and uh, is uh, studying the studying education. Awesome. Uh, if I move to Finland to study, considering the current situation, COVID, can I part? Can my partner join me? He will apply to study in Finland in January. Um, I don't know, honestly. I I don't know. Uh, please contact the the the, the, the Finnish immigration service. Let me see. Just a moment. Uh, right. So, Google this. Uh, go to the Migri Finnish Immigration Service website, and uh, the time difference between Helsinki or Finland and Romania shouldn't be that much. So, just contact them via the chatbot. You can actually ask to, can I talk to a person? And uh, of course, I, I, th- I don't think they're online right now. Right, but ne- during normal office hours in Finland, you can talk to the the. Oh damn! You can actually can't see this because of the the screen. Whoops. Right. So, try. Let's try again. So, uh, come to the Finnish Immigration Service website. Open up the the chatbot and actually ask to talk to a real person. And uh, during normal office hours, they will be able to answer your questions. Uh, second option is to. Uh, simply check the uh, Migri um, residence permit for family member, I think. Uh, here, uh, you, you you actually have a lot of information about this kind of residence permits here. However, since you are, he's also applying to study in Finland in January, I'm not sure if he's el- eligible to get a residence permit here because you moved to Finland, what I would, pro- again, th- please take everything that I say with a grain of salt and please contact the Finnish Immigration Service about this yourself, just to make sure. But what I would do is that I would come to Finland a bit early um, and then uh, he, after he applies and get gets admitted, he's also able to apply for a residence permit for studies because that's different from having a residence permit based on a, a family membership or family ties so it's better to have that residence permit based on your studies right away so i, I would pre- recommend that you do that first i think maybe not sure something like this hopefully i, I don't know hopefully that that helps at least a bit <laughs> awesome the next question comes from adam Adam, 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 Adam from France. Vive la France. Uh, Adam, Adam is applying in the next application period uh, to Alto ISM. And the question is, the question is, uh, Alto advertises their ISM, which again is ISM Alto. Information and Service Management. I always forget the name. Alto advises their uh, Information and Service Management program as a very good program for employment they say that their graduates are the most sought after along with math along with graduates from math statistics and computer science students but as an international student even with that good master's degree is it actually easy to get employed or is this going to be a pain most importantly is there ageism in finland meaning discrimination against old graduates so 30 year olds who just graduated masters um Oh yeah, Warrior Mage saying that it's Romania is in the same time zone than as in Finland. I think that might be correct. Yeah, because I if you think about it, I think Helsinki is in the Helsinki is in the same time zone as Moscow, for example. And if you think about if you make a line 
uh, to to the, to the south from Moscow, I think Romania is pretty much in line, if I'm not too mistaken. Mistaken. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. So about the Alto ISM program, Alto University, of course, advertises all their specific program as very high for very good for employment. I would not take that their word as like the word of god uh, uh however statistic statistically st statistically speaking statistics statistically speaking uh the graduates from the aldo university school of business which is the school that aldo ism is educated under business graduates from aldo have extremely high employment numbers um again let's pull this let's pull this out all the, all the business. Um, let's see. School of Business graduates in work, working life at Aldo University. Let's see what the numbers are currently. Uh, whoopsie daisy. There we go. 97% of School of Business graduates are satisfied with their degree in terms of employment. And... Um, Let's see, let's see. Out of our students, 83% found employment before graduation. Right. So, and I think like after a year, like 90% of business graduates from Aldo have already found a job. So so basically, <clears throat> Aldo University School of Business graduates have extremely high employment numbers, you know, like all, all across the board. So I don't think it's like program specific again. It doesn't matter what you study. It only matters how good you are at what you do. So, doesn't matter whether it doesn't matter if you're a graduate from Harvard. If you suck at what you do, you will not get a job. That's just the reality. So, again, <clears throat> excuse me. Again, my recommendation is that you go to. I I think that actually, if you're thinking about like jobs uh, in Finland. Please go to the channel and check out this interview with that I had with Saku Tihreinen. He gives so many good insights about job hunting in Finland and specifically how to kind of lay the groundwork uh, for job hunting in Finland um, uh, as a student. He talked a lot about networking as a student, how to find jobs and how to do like the long term work in, in, in terms of getting a job after you graduate, uh, because Getting a job in Finland, even as a Finnish citizen, even as a local student, it is not easy. And and I would I would say that it's not more difficult for an international student to get a job per se. But the biggest problem is that international students don't have don't know where to look for the information that you are is required to to get a job. So this is one of the reasons why this channel exists because I want to give, share the information to you guys because I know it's a pain pain to find. Uh, and um, to go to your question about ageism, no. Um, some people say that, uh, uh, that there is some ageism when you're like 50, 60, so closer to your retirement age. But I'm 30. Or I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm 29 officially. 30 next year. Um, a lot of people in Finland graduate when they're 30. Uh, because again, we have a more relaxed university system. So uh, plus you have to consider that a Finnish um, males have to do, do a, a one-year military service or six months to one year. So we ha graduated from high school uh, at the age of 18. We go to do our military service when we're 19. And most people don't actually get um, accepted to their pri uh, number one study place in the first try. So then you're 21 when you actually get into school. And then that's like five years of studies at, at the minimum. So you're 26, and if you're a bit slow like me, then you're 27, 28 when you graduate. So being closer to 30 when you graduate is completely normal, and it does not impact negatively on on your opportunity uh, chances on, on getting a job. At least this is my exp uh, yeah, it's not even just my experience; it's just a fact. I'm sorry. So, so uh, ISM is a good program. I've done some of the courses; it's really interesting. Um, but uh, I would not l choose the program based on uh, the employment numbers per se. I would, again, look for a program that you're interested in because it doesn't matter what program you, you choose and it doesn't matter how however high the employment numbers are. 
<coughs> excuse me it doesn't matter how high the no employment numbers are if you suck at what you do so Yeah, yeah, exactly. Warrior made saying that I I can conf confirm that uh, that too. Some people get their master's degree pretty late, pretty late. Spe yeah, specifically late, but it's okay, really, uh, totally normal. In Finland, actually, because the the education here is free for Finnish nationals and EU nationals, um, some people actually do their masters when they're forty five, forty or something like this. Uh, or, or for example, someone could do, I actually have a good friend, uh, uh from school and, and he, we actually used to work for the same company. He actually originally was a bartender. He, he worked for as a bar, bar bartender for 10 years, got sick of it and applied to business school. And now he graduated, uh, a year ago and he's 30, closer to 35 when he graduated and he's doing really well as a consultant, uh, as a management consultant. So it doesn't matter. We have a very different uh, education culture and uh, system and culture here in Finland. So, next question comes from uh, Yevgenia, and uh, the question is: Is it easy to make friends with Finnish people? I heard it's hard to find a way to people's heart uh, or the Finnish people's hearts um, if you are a foreigner. Yeah, so I actually touched upon this a couple of times already in the stream. So, it's not necessarily that difficult i would say but you have to take into account our, that our culture is a bit different from many others so first of all we don't hug and hug and kiss strangers of course during covid no one wants to do it but for example we don't do the cheek kisses in finland that's something that we don't do it's a, it's a bit weird for people uh, plus we don't know how to do it like practically we don't know how many kisses you have to give um second we don't hug strangers uh we usually just shake a hand um and we might feel a bit or seem a bit kind of inwards um or how do you say um we might feel a bit uh cold at first it's a bad word but i, I think you get what i mean um however you have to take into account that in Finland, again, as I mentioned before, we don't really have those shallow friendships where, you know, it's just you scratch my back, I scratch your back type of thing. Um, it, it, we just don't like to do things that way. Um, instead, what we do is we basically put a lot of effort into into real friendships a lot of time a lot of like love and friendship goes into making someone to your friend but when you actually become a friend with a Finn, you will actually get a friend for a lifetime and we're super loyal um actually again i don't want to point fingers but a, a good friend of mine was he did his exchange summer in um in california and he said that actually it was really difficult to find real friends from the u.s because he felt that especially at the college or university level there a lot of people were like super shallow and they basically just wanted to have the uh, they, they wanted to build their network that they can use whenever they need them and you know no one would be real friend of course no one it's a harsh word but most people would not be like real friends but it's like this it's exactly like this, like you you scratch my back, I scratch your back, like type of um, transactional friendships in a sense. Uh, so we don't really have that, or a lot of Finns don't really, really don't like it. So anyhow. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let's jump into the next question, which comes from Aaron. Uh, Aaron, I still hope that you're live. It's taking me a while to answer all the questions. If you're not, uh, I hope you get the, the answer in the pl uh, replay. Uh, anyhow, the, the question is, since Finnish people appreciate their teachers, I wonder what was the most impactful thing that a teacher ever told you? P.S. I can't send the link through the chat. Can I send it via Discord DM? Yeah, sure. Of, of course. Uh, P.S. P.S. Nice watch. Thank you. Let's actually talk about that in just a second. Um, what was the most impactful thing that um, a teacher has ever told me? There's a couple of things that I, I actually re really remember, or three things that I really remember from my teachers from, from my primary school all the way to high school. 
Uh, the first thing or like the first person that I remember was our primary school teacher who was who who we had we had the same teacher all throughout our from first to seventh grade. Um, and uh, her name is, was her name was Tellervo. And um, she I went to an I, I went to a school where we our main language was actually Swedish. So I, I learned Swedish when I was uh, starting from when I was seven. And um, she was extremely strict. Uh, not like, um, I, I don't mean like she was strict in um, in the normal sense, but she was very strict in that she wanted a lot from us. She wanted us to actually put a lot of effort and she wanted us to do well. And unfortunately, a lot of our, our class, we don't didn't really res respect that or we didn't really like it, of course, at the time because no kids don't want to work. So we didn't really want to do as much as she would have wanted us to do, um, specifically work in terms of school. However, now, like 20 years later, I, I, I have so much respect towards her and I'm so thankful for her pushing us so as much as she did because there's uh, we actually had a very small class. We had 18 people in our class uh, or like this, well, it basically class that we... Um, we went through all uh, the entire primary school with just 18 people uh, in the same classes. And um, if I just think about uh, think about it uh, from the top of my head, one of my old classmates is a CEO in a really successful growth company, and he's less, he's 29. Uh, one is a really successful lawyer. One is a designer in a really successful uh, uh, startup. Um, well, I'm I'm doing my stuff. Uh, we have a huge amount of really successful people and, and we could already see that back then because our teacher was pushing us so much uh, with love, basically. Or it was based on everything. Everything was based on that the fact that she wanted us to do well. Uh, and I, 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 I nowadays I understand the, the positive impact of that and I'm, I'm very appreciative. Uh, the second teacher that I really remember is, is our... Um, I don't remember what or know the word exactly what it's in English, but we basically had a, in Finland we have like this woodwork or like like woodwork machine work classes that we have to take, uh, and then we had uh, the same teacher doing th those classes as well as our our uh, sports classes or PPA or whatever it is P classes, and uh, he really pushed us to do sports, and uh, I we really got got. Um, got along with him well and he really uh, wanted us to enjoy sports and that was I think one of the really big uh, that had a very big impact on for example me in terms of that I, I like doing ex I like I, I like exercising I like doing sports um, carpenter carpenter class thank you <laughs> yeah exactly so doing like small wood stuff would work and, and just getting to know different tools as when you're young and I think that was one of um, those were actually one of my favorite classes uh, so that that's the second teacher that had a really big impact on me, and then one of uh, then uh, the the third teacher who had a huge impact on me was in high school. Actually, what is this? Mm, was my uh, Finnish teacher? So we have we had our Finnish classes, and uh, I I've never been that much of a, of a writer. I I've never been that good good of a writer. Um, and, uh, it was really cool because most of my teachers before, they really tried to push me to write a lot of stuff and I really never really enjoyed it as a content form. And, uh, my high school Finnish teacher was so nice because she realized that my talent is not, or my skills are not in writing, in text, but in, 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 in talking. And, uh, she really pushed me into learning how to do public speech speeches you know just expressing myself in in um orally instead of trying to to write essays and uh that had a huge impact on for example this channel because i wouldn't be doing this unless i would i, I would be feel comfortable on on um doing like public speaking so i think these three teachers had had the most impact of on me and and i'm super appreciative for them and I, I appreciate their impact. Uh, anyway, uh, anyhow, actually, Aaron was uh, mentioned that uh, I have a nice watch. So actually, I, I think that this is a very nice segue to to really quickly thank 
uh, the sponsor uh, of this live stream, which is uh, Arni. So you've probably seen these watches already in some of my video previous videos. But Arni is a focus. There you go. So Arni is actually a Finnish brand that designs and manufactures these really beautiful wooden watches. And the really cool thing is that they use their uh, they use they use Finnish wood as the base material for most of their watches. So for example, this Arni XO Elm is actually made out of Finnish elm wood or, or elm tree. And uh, I personally really like the the way the colors work together. So the white dial and the dark grain of the focus, the dark grain of the wood. Uh, but yeah, actually Arni. So I I actually know the the guys from Arni uh, from school. The, the one of the founders is a classmate of mine, and. Um, I actually, they were nice enough to give me a 10% discount code that you guys can use if you want to get yourself a a watch. This is actually a second model that they sent me to show you guys. Come on, there you go. So the navy blue dial. So if you guys want to get yourself a watch or if you want to actually get yourself wooden sunglasses, they also make sunglasses and uh, uh, real leather uh, wallets. Uh, Use the link that I have in the description box below. And I also have a uh, discount code in the description box below that you guys can use. And uh, you get a discount. I get a small portion of the sales price. Everyone is happy. And uh, you would be directly supporting the channel, uh, which I, I would absolutely appreciate. Yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I do appreciate you reminding me. Um, of course, I would be very happy if you bought one for yourself because actually these are really cool. The the craftsmanship and actually the the quality of the watches is really really nice. Actually, a small story here, super quickly. Since you guys, since you guys, uh, some of you guys have been interested interested in what I've actually what I actually do and uh, what kind of project I've been working myself. I'm trying to check if I have. Ah, never mind. I actually, I have a, I have a watch company of my own, um, because one of my best friends is actually a watch smith, so our watchmaker. And uh, we founded a company five years ago, and uh, our plan was to design and create these super high-end uh, hand-made uh, hand, uh, watches. Watches, excuse me. And um, uh, the the price of our watches are, is around five thousand five hundred euros. So they're super expensive, but they're fully handmade uh, out of Finnish materials. Uh, we've actually sold a couple of them, but uh, it, it takes us multi a couple of months to actually manufacture a single watch. So it's basically a hobby nowadays. But uh, I actually know quite a lot of watches and, and manufacturing watches. So so I, I can say that the, the the guys at Arni are actually doing a really good job with the quality, um, especially considering the price range. So I definitely recommend getting yourself one if you're interested. Anyhow, let's get back to the questions. Uh, the next question comes from Saad Ur Rehman, uh, who says that I'm a, I'm Pakistani, but nowadays living in Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan, cool. All right, uh, and uh, he has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland. However, um, I'm a student of MD, so medical doctor, I guess at the Medical Academy Bishek, Bishek, uh, Kyrgyzstan. Cool. But I want to transfer my degree to Finland uh, into a Finnish medical school. And uh, I want to migrate as an international student in the medicine from my college. Mm, so uh, so how wh what does that entail? That is a super interesting question and I would re really recommend that you actually fi uh, look deeper into this because we ha actually have a really big need for medical talent in Finland, not only doctors, but nurses as well, uh, and, and especially like specialized doctors. So I, I really would love to help you 
make this a reality if, if I if I can help you in any ways. So uh, what I would recommend you to do is to contact the University of Helsinki, which has the best medical school in, in Finland, uh, and specifically their medical uh, admission services. So again, the email is... Um, I will, if if you're still live, uh, you can have it uh, in the live chat. Admissions, so plural, admissions at helsinki.fi. That is the admission services for the University of Helsinki. Uh, send them an email and ask them what would it require you to actually transfer to study medicine in Finland. Uh, the problem here is that medicine is pretty uh, restricted uh, in terms of certifications in Finland, and I'm not sure what it will actually take um, to study medicine here, especially if you're already uh, far, quite far with your studies. Anyhow, the next question comes from Mohamed uh, from Algeria, and the question is, my grades aren't that good, but if I get good marks in the en entrance exams, can I get a scholarship? It is impossible for me to say, um, so I it's I don't know. It's it's impossible for me to say. The scholarships depend, and the the minimum requirements for the scholarships depend on the university as well as the degree program. And in in addition, it also depends on the level of applicants each year because scholarships in Finland are given granted on a competitive basis, meaning that the better applicants you have, the more difficult it is to get a scholarship that specific year. So impossible to say. But again, of course, it's always possible. So what I would say that you should really work really, really hard uh, for your um, entrance exam and try to really, really get uh, good points from that. And uh, of course, it is possible for you to, to get a scholarship. Uh, whether or not it's possible for you to get a full scholarship, don't know. It depends on the school and again, on, on the other things. But uh, I would at least try. Yeah, Yevgeny, yeah, I think they're, the products are really, really cool. They've done really good work with the, the brand and the, the products for multiple years. And I actually met them met them when they had only started the business. And uh, it's really cool to see how these guys have actually built the brand over the years. And uh, I really enjoy their products myself. Um, anyways, the next question comes from Denise. Uh, and the question is, have you ever visited Oulu University? No, I actually have not ever visited the university itself. I've been to Oulu, Oulu multiple times, especially passing by when I've go, gone to Lapland. Um, but I've never been to the campus. Is there anything you can say about the city of Oulu? <laughs> well, smooth break. Um... Oulu is a big city. Uh, it's one of the bigger cities in Finland. Um, there's a lot of technology there. Uh, a lot of technology companies, for example. Uh, a couple of my really good friends are actually from Oulu, and uh, they enjoy Oulu themselves. It's really hard for me to say anything personal because I've never lived there. Uh, the one thing that I would say is that it's very different from Helsinki in the terms of the weather, um, because this, the the winter is a bit longer in, in that uh, the winter days are long uh, shorter, meaning that there's less light during winter uh, because it's so much higher no up north compared to Helsinki. However, of course, because it's higher, you have more snow than in Helsinki. So I, I would actually like that. Or I would actually prefer that. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I, I really don't know what else to say because I don't have any personal experience. Yeah, Warrior Mage saying that Oulu is the, one of the cheapest city, big cities uh, in terms of real estate and apartments. That is true. That's actually very true. Um, and uh, I would say that Oulu is not maybe as modern, modern as Helsinki, but that's expected because Helsinki is the capital. So, but on the other hand, Helsinki is way more expensive uh, compared to compared to to uh, to Oulu. Mm. Again, if if there's a degree there that you you are interested in, apply. It's not about the city. Uh, and if you don't enjoy the city, you can always move uh, to some uh, other city after you graduate. That's not a problem at all. Uh, yeah, the, uh, there were some reports that the city is l less safe than Tampere when it comes to security and crime. Yeah, there were a couple of incidents um, that I d really don't want to go into because I, it just makes me mad. There were some incidents in Oulu region a couple, a couple of years back with some 
people and uh, I think that that had, has had some impact on the kind of public image of Oulu but it's nothing serious it, it, it's nothing that you should be worried about uh, the thing is that basically every single crime that happens in Finland gets into the news because there's so little such a small cl- uh, amount of crime done in Finland especially more like uh, uh, um, abhorrent crimes so um, I would I think that that's one of the reasons why there was such a big uh, oobla about the things that happened um The next question comes from Idris, who comes from the Comoros Islands, which is extremely awesome. I actually have to Google. Where are the Comoros Islands? Cool. So basically, in between Tanzania and Madagascar. That's dope. That's really cool. Um... Actually, I don't remember. Idris, are you already a member of the Discord server? Because if if you are, please send us a couple of pictures from co- the Comoros Islands to, for example, the Chit Chat or General, or for example, to the Chit Chat channel, because it would be so awesome to see what kind of uh, uh, the, what the environment is like and what what is the climate like in the Comoros Islands, uh, because that sounds super super awesome. Anyhow, back to the point. Uh, Idris is um, applying in the next application period to the University of Eastern Finland, doing a master's in computer sciences. And um, the question is: Actually, I have been nominated by my home university to an do to do an exchange at the University of Eastern Finland in Kuopio the next spring semester. Can you give me some advice about everything? Um, I would really need you to be a bit. <laughs> Uh, Idris, uh, awesome to have you online. If you could, please uh, uh, jump into the Discord server, send us a couple of uh, Im- pictures from the the islands. Oh, you're not a member. What? Just a second. Just a second. There you go. Use the, the link uh, that I provided in the chat to join the server and se- send a couple of pictures when you get there. We have a chit chat channel there where we talk about random stuff. Just send us a couple of pictures from the Commodore Commodore Islands because it sounds awesome. Anyhow, um, if you could please be a bit more specific with your question. Um, uh, I don't really necessarily have that much uh, that to say about Kuopio as a city itself, but like uh, surviving in Finland during the spring semester, for sure there's a lot of things that I can say there, especially considering where you come from. Uh, but if you could please be a bit more specific, um, for example, in the chat, I, c- I could just, I can read your comments there. Um, and I would love to answer any more, sp- any questions that are a bit more specific Um Uh, because this is a super wide question. Anyhow, next question comes from Fethi. And uh, the question is, you said you worked as a recruiter. Uh, Actually, I didn't work as a recruiter. I worked at a recruitment company as a marketer. However, so I don't have a... uh, I'm not proficient in recruitment itself. However, I do have a lot of insights into the topic and, and the field, just to correct. Uh, for someone who has graduated from PhD, what are the chances he will be employable in the industry? Uh, again, in control systems and automation. I'm interested in research, but I'm afraid I'm going to end up in academia if I pursue a PhD. What do you think about this? Um, that's a very good question. Again, uh, take everything that I say with a grain of salt because it's um, it's a difficult topic to say because I don't have personal experience in the field. However, if you do a PhD in control systems and automation, just let me see. Let's actually check out this together. Um, so I, if I understand, I understand it correctly. The Degree in control systems and automation is under the Department of Electrical Engineering, correct? I would guess so, or at least it's under the the School of Engineering. Okay, so that that would still mean that it's um, uh, you you would be doing a PhD in engineering itself. 
so absolutely you will be employable so actually fun fact if you look at the the largest publicly traded companies in finland and their management teams and their like board of directors most of those people so people people who get paid like the highest salaries in all of finland uh they're like uh, in the boards and management teams of nokia and uh these big big uh, uh international corporations most of those people either have two master's degrees or they have a phd so fin- finnish people we love education and we really appreciate high high uh, ed- education so if you do a phd in, in engineering you can absolutely be get employed in your field of course it, it would be better uh, or good for you to get some work experience in between so for example one idea could be that um uh, after you do your master's necessary consider whether you want to do a phd immediately after uh, doing your master's or whether you would maybe like to um work a couple of years and then go and do your phd not only could it be good for your like future career prospects because you already have some work like hands-on work experience but also your phd might be actually more interest interesting for you because you already have that kind of real like work experience perspective that you get from working in the field uh, i've heard from some phd students that this actually gives you a, a lot more perspective into the academia as well which is really uh, i think a good point so, so so think about that um but yeah definitely in in the fields of engineering and business if you have a phd absolutely you will be able to get employed and in and actually get paid really well um so definitely the next question and actually we are starting to run out of questions so you've got uh, sorry uh, so it's under the chemical department process control and automation right the same thing basically if you think about like chem- chemical uh, the department of uh, ke- chemical department or or process control process uh, engineering automation uh, all of these kind of fields these are highly highly appreciated in finland if you think about like the chemical industry the process industry automation robotics um, it's just just looking at like the finnish forest industry which is massive it's our one of our biggest exports the amount of engineers that they employ in the forest industry not like not only like chemists physics mathematicians engineers like different type of engineers uh researchers like hands-on engineers university educated university of Uni- uh, applied sciences educated there's a lot of work for different type of engineers and the higher your education the better however i would consider taking maybe a couple of years off from school work in between and then go back to the bsg however of course what i recommend is that you after you or just before you graduate as masters um, talk talk about this with your professors and uh, try to get a recommendation from them as well and um, tell them about your ambitions and and about your um, future career uh, ideas and they will most likely give you a really good uh, you know some really good perspective on whether or not you should pursue your phd right away or after a, a, a while of working i guess Anyway, anyhow, the question comes from, next question comes from Aaron. And uh, the question is, I was thinking about making a YouTube channel translating Kurdish songs into Finnish so I can further, more, uh, further improve my Finnish language skills. And my question is, which type of Finnish world Finnish would you recommend me to translate it to? Spoken Finnish or book Finnish? That's a good question. Mm. That's a really good question. Um, I I would say that uh, you have to use a mix. So a lot of songs in that are written in Finnish are actually written in uh, the book Finnish, so kind of like the official Finnish language. Um, but then they always have a mix of spoken Finnish as well, depending on the style. So if you're like a, a more hip, for example, hip hop songs or or. The, uh, any any type of uh, music like this it's most likely more spoken finnish has a lot of slang in in it uh, local slang could be for example uh, however if you have more like uh, traditional finnish uh, uh, music that could be more towards book finnish um, but I, I would say that spoken finnish would be better uh, because it's more relatable and then again it's better for you to practice because again spoken finnish is what we use day to day 
super interesting question and actually that would be a really interesting uh youtube channel if if you actually are able to pull it off please let me know and i'll, I'll be your first subscriber definitely and i will also start a uh, espresso fund for you as well <laughs> um next one comes from adam and the question is are free online banks a thing in finland and what is the cheapest way to have a bank account without fixed monthly year uh, annual fees i don't need a credit card just a bank account maybe a way to buy etf as well if possible so basically investing uh, in general it would be interesting to have a video about the savings options in finland i only know uh, about this asp account yeah so basically asp is a it's asunto asunto tili uh, in Finnish, meaning that we, it's basically the savings account for first home buyers that we have. It, it's super popular in Finland. So, um, so online banks are a bit of a mystery in Finland in a sense that we are used to having free online banking services included in our banking services packages whatever they are called and uh, there is a couple of big large nordic banks like nordia which have they've gotten a lot of backlash about making their online banking uh, actually paid and people have got people actually got extremely furious to them because they started uh, having these 10 euro per month or something fees or even a couple of euros per month fees for their banking services and even though it's not that much money, if you give something for free once, then you it's impossible to ask money for it because people are just going to get pissed. So, uh, so depends on the bank, basically. Um, I'm the customer of three different banks in Finland, plus I actually have my investments in another service um, called Nordnet. Actually, I could just show it to you. Actually, I could just... doesn't really matter. So... This is the investment service that I use. Uh, for some reason, it's only in Finnish. Uh, Nordnet is a is a super popular uh, investment platform in Finland. Uh, really reliable. Their services and mobile apps are really good, and they have very low transaction fees. Uh, not only for ETFs but stocks as well. And uh, I, I I've really enjoyed. It. I actually moved all of my stocks and investments from my main bank to this service uh, not only because the service here is much better and and uh, it's more uh, the analysis tools that they have are more uh, are better and it's just overall a better better experience but also i just wanted to to um i wanted to have my investments separate from my bank account because that makes it more difficult for me to actually pull uh pull my uh uh equity or my stocks into into um uh, liquidated um, assets onto my bank account which means that i that actually i actually ended up saving more in my stock or actually i actually ended up putting more money into my stocks and not pulling anything out of them uh compared to if i had my investments in the same bank where i had my daily banking services i would actually sell a lot of stocks and just use that money for my daily um, costs which i don't want so i like having my uh, investments here separately um, again, I don't know if they have the services in English. Uh, then a couple of uh, banks that I'm a customer of. First one is uh, Nordea. Uh, one of the big, largest banks in the Nordics. Uh, also a global bank. They It's a really, really big bank. Um, they have really good mobile services. Their web services and mobile services are... are some of the best in in Finland. They also have really good uh, payment cards, contactless payment services, um, and so on. They have some service fees that are a bit irritating. But again, then if you have any any income, that's you're not even even you're not even going to feel it. So uh, that's that's one bank I would I can recommend. Um, <coughs> excuse me. The Second bank that I'm a customer of is uh, Danske Bank, which is also a really large Nordic bank. Uh, I don't have any savings here. I actually only use their payment services because this is tied into the um, student card that we use. The mobile student card is actually tied into Danske Bank's app, um, which is uh, really really nice, and I really recommend that you use it. I actually have a dedicated video about student cards uh, and the payment services that that 
come along with it in the channel. So go ahead and check that out. And then the third bank that I'm uh, a customer of is is All and Spunk, and is which is a very small. Um, it's a very small bank from Finland, uh, Åland, which is a, a, a region outside of, uh, or basically in the Finnish Gulf. And uh, this is a really, really cool small bank. They actually don't even have business banking services at all. Uh, but I really like it because their service is very personal. Um, because it's a small bank, they don't have that many customers compared to the massive global banks and um, I've always felt that we I get really personal good high level uh, customer service from them uh, they're a bit more expensive they don't have as good investment tools um, but I, I've really liked to use this I, I've, I've been a customer for as long as I remember so so I would I, I would say that those are, are some of the banks that I recommend then there's uh, mo- other banks like OP, OP which is a really big bank as well they have good services as well in general, banking services in Finland are not that expensive. Uh, they're all good good quality and depending on what kind of services you want. So you, for example, mentioned that you don't want a credit card. Actually, in Finland, we don't even use that much credit cards compared to like the US. I would really recommend that you get a debit card from Finland because it th- makes things a bit easier uh, compared to you having an uh, international debit card. Um, although since you come from France, I'm, I'm not sure if that's a problem. As long as it's a Visa or a MasterCard, you're not going to have any issues. Or a, a, uh, American S- Express. Visas and Ma- MasterCards are very widely used in Finland. But if, if it's something like local, then you should get a, a card from Finland. Uh, yeah, Alexi is actually corre- uh, completely correct in that if you have a legal residence in a European economic area country you can open a bank account in Finland. It might be a, it might be a bit of a hassle in the beginning to open the, the account because they might be requiring some extra documents from you and it, it might be a bit of a pain in the ass. But my, my recommendation is that before you actually reserve any kind of meeting at the bank, call them first, tell who you are, what you're doing in Finland, so basically that you're a student and that you're from X, from this X country and that you have a residence permit for your studies and ask them what kind of documents do you require from me in order to open a bank account. So so I think you should be fine. Uh, again, uh, uh, Adam, uh, Adam, about the uh, investments, I really recommend that you use some kind of an e- investment platform. If it's not Nur- Nurnet, the one that I showed you, of course, there's a lot of different international investment services the only thing that that you should uh, keep in mind is that the tax uh, taxation of investments in finland functions in a very specific manner and you just have to make sure that the investment platform that you use that they handle your profits from your investments and therefore uh, you get reports from your investments in a correct uh, form so that you can report them to the tax administrator so that you can be taxed correctly uh, because if you don't get those reports, then you will be uh, overtaxed, basically. And that's never nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll, actually, guys, read what Alex is writing in the chat because he has a lot of information on this topic. So there's a lot of small caveats about opening a bank account in Finland as an international student. And uh, Alex is right on the nose on the on the issue. So, uh Arthur, I will get into your question in just a second. I have only one question before that. And uh, the question is from Yevgenia. Uh, and uh, the question is, where is it possible to learn Finnish pronunciation to sound like natives? That's a very good question. Um, Alexi is currently updating his... Alexi actually has um, a couple of cor- Finnish language spoken Finnish language courses that are really really good. He's currently updating those courses, so um, uh, I, I would recommend that you follow Alex's channel and uh, put on all the noti- notifications. And for example, subscribe to his email list uh, because he will most likely li- let you know when he has updated all of his uh, Finnish spoken language courses, which are really really good, and they focus on the spoken Finnish and pronunciation. And I think that the best way of learning how to pronounce like a Finn is by speaking with a native. So have have a teacher uh, because just trying to do the, those based from on like a, a text or 
I, I, I like solely solely listen to listening to TV is is it's a good good way of learning. But I think that having a teacher or like a dedicated course like what Alexi has done is is really valuable in this case. Uh, but yeah, uh, you just need to start speaking and you need to have someone who is correcting your pronunciation all the time because there's a lot of different vowels, there's a lot of different pronoun um, specific type of, of, of pronouncing, like for example the R, the R in Finnish, uh, they're very di different from uh, other languages, especially if you're, an, um, if you're an English speaker or native English speaker, Finnish can be a bit of a pain in the ass to learn to pronounce it. Pronounce it. Um, uh, no, you do not have to, Yevgenia, no, you do not have to unregister from Lithuania uh, to register in a magistrate in Finland. Uh, just register in the magistrate in, in Finland. Uh, it dip whether or not you have to unregister from your home country depends on, on the, um, uh, the, the, the way that you do things in your home country. So, for example, if, if you want your post or post to be re re redirected to Finland. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it's going to work with your home countries or Lithuanian post service well enough if you already have a registered address in Lithuania. So you might want to at least, uh, in, if, if, if and when you move abroad from Finland, you would then inform the register magistrate here that you're, you have moved to another country and you would inform their them with your new address and so that the Finnish postal service can actually re redirect your post uh, or mail to another country. So just make sure that you have all the kind of small details done already in Lithuania before you move to Finland. Uh, there might be some small details like this. You can always take care of them afterwards if you don't remember everything, so don't worry about it. All right, Arthur, your question is next. And... Um, the question is, Oliver, when I access the HOAS website and I filter the housing options, the website always shows different rooms in the same building with distinct prices, and I actually can't see the real price or the of the rent I want. Do you know what I should do in order to see the original prices? I'm also aiming for something up like, or something in the range of 350 euros in a shared apartment. Do you believe it is possible? Uh, we shall see. Let's look at this together. All right, so what we are, so, shut up. Let's see, where do we have English? Thank you. Hashtag not sponsored, by the way. Excuse me. All right, so when we're looking at student apartments from the HOAS website, <laughs> we can, Look at the different apartments. Now let's see Helsinki. Mm, all areas. A room in a shared apartment. Uh, let's leave these empty. Maximum rent, let's say 350. All right, so. So we get all the different uh, buildings, basically, that we are able to uh, rent. Uh, I'm sorry, all the buildings that HOAS has in the Helsinki area. So these are not the apartments themselves, but the addresses, basically. So we can see here that, um, for example, in Arendinkuja, Malmin Kardano, we have uh, single rooms in shared apartments. We have studios and family apartments as well. Uh, Evgenia, once again, thank you so much for the... No, thanks. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, uh, that is, uh, now I have money for uh, espresso and a pull. Thank you very much. A pull is basically, uh, a pull is a, uh, there, pull is, is something like this, for example, in Finland. Very tasty. Lovely. Nom, 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 nom. Thank you for the the super chat. I I, I appreciate it. Um, anyhow, so yeah, but basically, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. So the problem for you was that um, that you weren't seeing the same apartments. Um, so for example, here you have the apartment types. Uh, when you open up a 
building, you see the apartment types and you can actually see a listing of the, the different apartments that they have. So for example, here we have a room in a shared apartment, uh, 324 euros. So we could open this up and see that there is a, the room itself is 13.6 square meters and the entire apartment is then 60, 62 square meters in total. Um, the exact question was... Uh... Right, so the, the thing here is that um, when you apply uh, for different apartments, I don't remember if at HOAS you can actually apply for a very specific apartment. Uh, unlike, for example, with AYY, you can apply for a very single specific apartment. However, with HOAS, you, you basically can see the kind of the general idea, general overview of the apartments in that very specific building, the prices and the, the services that they have. And uh, when you apply, you apply to a when you apply, you apply instead of, I'm sorry, instead of applying to a specific apartment, you, I think you apply to a, uh, you apply to uh, an address, I think. So instead of, yeah, I think this is, if I remember correctly, I'll just check. So apply, degree, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, prefer, preferred areas. So you could basically apply different regions here. And uh, then you would put the apartment info information, so room in a shared apartment. And then you could actually put in here the maximum rent, so 350 euros a month. So as you can see here, you don't get to choose the actual address or the building that you apply to. Rather, you actually apply to a region and then you will be assigned an apartment that fits these criteria as well as possible. Um, based on on the availability the the your financial situation etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, i would i would use these um uh, apartment information that you have here in the on the website i would use these only as a benchmark because you're you're still not necessarily um going to, you're not necessarily uh going to know which specific apartment you are going to be assigned into uh if, if you get what, what i mean so yeah, anyway, uh, I hope that that answered your question. All right, I think that we are going to take one more question and then I think we I might have to end the, the live stream for today. Um, let's see how this question goes because my energy levels are, are dropping quite quite rapidly. The next question comes from Topoyo. And uh, the question is, hi, Oliver, which bank would international students use or would you recommend the international students to use? Oh, yeah, actually, I so I basically almost answered the question here. So let me just once more show you guys. So one good bank is Nordea. A second good bank is Danske Bank. Uh a third bank that I can recommend is OP. OP. Let's see. Private customers. This is this is one of the uh, larger, really good banks. Um, we have Actia, Actia Bank. Actia is one. Uh, for some reason, they don't have their website on in English for some weird reason. Uh, we have uh, multiple other banks, but I'd, I'd say that these th three are the biggest and most used ones. So definitely, if you if you get a, an account from or a, an and account and a card from Norlea, Danske Bank, or OP, you're gonna be completely happy. It's up to you. Uh, re um, what I would recommend uh, you to do is to contact each of them, ask for the required documents that they want from you in order to become a customer, and then ask for a price sheet, and then just compare the different prices that they have for their services, and uh, then make a decision whether or not you want to become a customer. The cool thing is that if you're able to get a um, you're able to become a customer of a one bank, 
in Finland, you're actually able to become a customer of multiple banks here. So, for example, you don't necessarily have to have your loans in the same bank as you have your like daily banking services. So, for example, I know that a lot of people, they have their like main banking services in one place and then they get a super good offer for their um, uh, like for their their uh, what is this called? Uh, for different loans, for example, for their apartments. Um, mortgages right from a uh, second bank so they take their the mortgages from the uh, another bank etc etc so you don't have to tie yourself into one single bank especially if you're going to live in finland for a long time all right cool um i think that it should perhaps be time uh, Aaron, actually, yeah. Uh, Danske Bank is Danish. Uh, Nordea is, I think, Swedish. Um, and then Ope is, I think, Finnish. But these are all big Nordic banks. So uh, there's a lot of uh, Danish, uh, Swedish, um, Norwegian banks that operate in in the entire Nordics as well as globally. But uh, we, we really like using like Nordic banks here because, uh, well... I don't actually know the reasons. Well, they operate here because we don't have that many American banks operating in Finland. So. Anyhow, I think that that is it for today. Uh, there's no more questions in the form that I haven't answered. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out for such a long, long time. Once again, if you for some reason are not a member uh of our, I cannot speak and write at the same time. If you're for some reason not a member of our Discord server, please join. Again, the idea of, is to grow a community of people interested in working and studying in Finland. And uh, we just have a lot of really cool dialogue there. And I post updates about my about my videos. Uh, thank you so much for joining the, the stream, uh, hanging out for such a long time, asking really good questions. I really hope that you guys were getting value out of this. If you did and you haven't yet, please do give this video or live stream thumbs up again because YouTube, that will tell YouTube that this is actually giving you value and it will bump it a bit in the algorithm. If you for some reason are not subscribed or even if you are subscribed, do make sure to put on all, all notifications because that will um, help you get updates when I actually post videos. Nowadays, YouTube doesn't really update, uh, give uh, nobody uh, show vid all videos to all subscribers so the only way to make sure that you actually see the videos is to have all notifications on finally if you're actually getting a lot of value and you would like to support what i'm doing here on this channel uh, i would really appreciate if you guys were to consider joining uh, as a member to the channel again there's currently there's four different channel membership levels each of which gives gives you a certain amount of different perks and, and benefits. And uh, uh, if you're interested to check out the different perks and the pricing, uh, you can check out them by clicking the join join button there, I think, below the video. Uh, and uh, you will have a pop, pop out window, window that will actually show all the perks that you get. Uh, for example, on the highest levels, I will give you guys personal um, career advice on Discord, on a private Discord discord channel as well as if you are the second if you are in the second um, members level you actually get access to private members only live streams that i do once a month and uh because there's way less people there we can actually have way more personal interaction and i can actually have a lot more personal discussions with you guys so uh again if if this is bringing value to you consider joining the channel membership i appreciate every single one of you nevertheless and uh i will get back to my normal uh, public publishing schedule next week. I have a lot of really cool videos for you guys, especially now that we are closer to the application periods opening. Anyways, thanks so much for joining us today. 